Talk radio is a strange medium that attracts strange individuals, and the Opie and Anthony show was no exception. During the show's 20-year run, it played host to many unusual characters, but few are as memorable as the woman from Elizabeth, New Jersey, nicknamed Lady Di. Her Dionysian lifestyle and reptilian approach to motherhood made her story relatable to those of us familiar with delinquent parents. However, she is probably more memorable to fans of the show because of the many bizarre and saddening details that were revealed about her life over the years. Likewise, the story's tragic end, and the ease with which it could have been avoided, are still puzzling Opie and Anthony scholars to this day. It's unclear exactly how, why, or when Diana Orbani came to the attention of the Opie and Anthony show. Posts from the Opie and Anthony message board, whackback.com, indicate that Lady Di was a fan of the show in a similar vein as another show regular named Stalker Patty, and that one day she simply showed up to the radio station. The Opie and Anthony show had a very dedicated fan community, especially on the various message boards where Anthony himself was an active participant. It's entirely possible that at one point, documentation of Di's earliest encounters with O and A exist. Unfortunately, many of the early fan sites are long defunct, so these moments may be lost to time and the bowels of the internet. Former O and A producer Eric Nagel believes Di and her friend Marion may have been introduced to the show in late 1999. Even Greg Opie Hughes has stated that he cannot remember how he and Anthony were introduced to Di and her friend Marion, collectively dubbed the retarded Laverne and Shirley. What is known is that Diana was calling into the show as early as January of 2001. Although Opie and Anthony already appeared to be familiar with Di, Marion, and several tropes associated with them. All right, two one two seven five seven one zero two seven. If you want in today, uh, Lady Di. Yes, oh. hi. How you doing? Happy Lady, New Year. Welcome Lady. back. How's everything? Oh, just dandy. Oh my God. You know, let me tell you something, guys. To commute home without you guys would be terrible. You know. Uh huh. I mean, I, I was hearing We're the radio and I was fired. Huh? That's horrible. Lady wow. Di, of but course, uh, really, really likes Anthony. A lot of a uh, lot of listeners have my screen name. Mm hmm. Yeah. And uh, we're keeping in touch with me. Okay. And I got privy to some information that I would like to share with Anthony. I haven't even told Anthony. Uh-oh. What, what information is that? Does this have to do with Lady Di? Open. It's me. It has something to do with Lady Di. All right. And okay. La and Lady what is Di, it? if this is true, you better uh, you better not deny it. Go ahead. Tell me. Uh, what? What? Okay. What? what? I, have I don't been, know. I have been informed that Lady Di, one half of the retarded Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> you better stop that. <laughs> yeah. Thinks yeah. Did you, that yes. she has a shot at Anthony. Wait a minute. Wow. Oh. <laughs> at some point afterward, Di and Marion appeared in studio for the first time. For longtime fans of O&A, this appearance is a surreal experience. Despite being nearly 20 years old, it bears the hallmarks of every Di and Marion segment that would follow it. Chiefly asinine and irrelevant babble that added nothing to the show. Uh, Did you really go out Diane of cologne? Diane got him. What? Did you, Did you guys really throw out the cologne? cologne? Yeah, I hated Why? your cologne present. That was Pierre Cardin. That was her idea. Opie? Yeah. Yes, it. A lot my of people. My idea would have wanted, wanted to get you guys like gift certificates or something. Oh All right, I'm listen. If you don't shut up, I will throw this. <laughs> what? When Opie and Anthony ended the segment by leaving Di and Marion to host the show, we would witness the second of their defining characteristics: fighting with callers and delivering vicious comebacks. Mario, Mario, you on the line? Yeah, how you doing? Hi, okay, how you doing? Yeah, uh, how much would it cost to f you two scrags in a dumper? <laughs> how much would it cost to f you in a dumper, buddy? I don't know. How much you got? <laughs> None of your business. I don't think you'd be worth a penny. Oh, come on, I'm worth uh, more I, than I'm that. I'm serious. I don't think you'd be worth a penny because I don't like your attitude. You uh, got I don't a bad like attitude. Oh, what are you gonna I do? I love on him. Really, you got a bad attitude. I don't like people with bad attitudes. Serious sorry. calls, please. Because of their buffoonish stupidity and tendency to get into arguments with the audience, Di and Marion became frequent guests of the show. But it wasn't until September of that year that they had their first truly memorable moment, when they acted as Opie and Anthony's replacements at the MTV Video Music Awards. Although this event is remembered by 50-year-old fetus Jim Norton, as the time Di and Marion prevented him from getting a photo with Mick Jagger, there were actually many hilarious moments to come out of their red carpet antics, such as Marion's questions for Suge Knight. Excuse me, you Suge Knight. What do you sing? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, no. Suge Day? Okay. Do we have a video camera for half the show? Suge Knight's yeah. brother. All right, you, All right. Two, you two no. imbeciles. All right, leave the guy alone. 
Well, they're, we're still waiting. They're special. They're special, sir. Okay. They're, they're special. Very special. They're special. special. Little. We're very special. Hey, have you guys mugged anybody lately? Robbed anybody? <laughs> Pickpocketed anybody? Marion. <laughs> <laughs> the guys just. <laughs> Have you shot anybody? <laughs> maybe you better. Marion, maybe right, you right, better shut chill. up now. Let's okay? chill out a little bit, okay? The pair would also assume any black man they saw was Jay Z or Cisco and accosted them with their catchphrase, Ying Yang Party. Hey, Jay Z, yo, 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 yo. That's Cisco. That's Cisco. That's Cisco. What I tell you? Dude, I, have to, I have to run away. Hey, yo, 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 yo. I have to run away. Hey, Cisco, can we interview you? <laughs> hey, who? Hey, fat boy. Oh, fat boy. Hey, fat boy. Yeah. Yang Yang Party. After their brief brush with fame, Di and Marion began to view themselves as minor celebrities as evidenced by their appearance on a road show Opie and Anthony did at Philadelphia's WYSP. Oh my God. Here they are. Now they have catchphrases and they're using them too much. Yeah, they don't even know how to we deal with that. that much. We don't use them that much. Hey, uh, talk right into that mic. You slobber into that one, please. <laughs> how you doing, Philadelphia? Well, how are you? Hey, Philadelphia, hi. How you doing? Yang Yang party! Yay! Yay! Oh my Yay! God. Shut up. I swear to God, this is like an <laughs> SNL bit, but it's the real damn thing. Fame had not made them any less stupid, it seemed, as after their appearance, they were asked to read liners for the station, which went about as well as you can imagine. <laughs> All right, you go first. All right, hey, this is the retired Lauren and Shirley from the Opie and Anthony show, and you're listening to the Eagles football on 94 WYSP. Hey, this is the retarded Laverne and Shirley from the Opie and Anthony show, and you're listening to Opie and Anthony on, w on 94 WISP. Hey, it's the retarded Laverne and Yeah, I know. She backed right, away. Right, right. Just, just okay. say that. Don't back okay. away, Diane. Okay, right. Hey, hey it's the retarded Laverne, Laverne and Shirley from the Opie and Anthony show, and you're listening to the Eagles football on 94 WISP. It was a small and seemingly innocuous statement made by Marion, though, that would prove to be frighteningly prophetic in the coming years. Okay. You had enough beer. <laughs> so, yeah, we're here to do things. We're not here to say. Okay. On the evening of the Philly Road Show, Di became intoxicated to the point that she blacked out, got on stage during a bikini contest, and flashed the crowd her bubs. All right, here, here's Lady Di talking about the Road Show, dancing in the bikini contest. You're dancing pretty crazy out on that stage like naked. Oh, yeah. But it was a good time, right? Naked. I wasn't naked, was I? Semi. Nah, nah. Was semi it naked? Was that? Was it, what do you mean, semi? You, you, you got more semi. confidence than me, girl. Let me tell you, I couldn't have gotten up there. Oh, my God. I would have been nervous beyond belief. Get out of here. I just would have been scared. I don't have that kind of confidence. So, in other words, I showed my boobies and that was it. Nothing else, right? You don't remember? I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, well, you're a cute little bottom. Girl, shut up, girl. No one's laughing over here. Earl, that's all I showed was that. Nothing else. Maybe a little bit of my ass, but that was it. Oh, there's oh no, my God. There's no such thing as a little bit of your ass. <laughs> she has no clue what she did on the stage. No. 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 Oh, wow. This kind of behavior could be written off as a little light-hearted debauchery if Di was a 20-year-old girl with no responsibilities. But it's important to remember that at this point in her life, she was a woman in her late 30s with an 11-year-old son. Still, her actions could have been forgiven if this was a lone incident. But it was not. Two months later, Lady Di took part in the Owen Day message board Christmas party, which was also attended by Anthony. According to Anthony, she was incredibly drunk and performed an indecent act on a man in a snowman costume. Anthony, there's a picture up of uh, Lady Di uh, filleting a dog. It looks like you were you were you were you were uh, telling the story earlier. You went to the yeah. OBAnthony.com uh, message board Christmas party. Yeah, and um, there was a bar nine here in uh, Manhattan, and she was there, drunk off her ass, with the other retarded uh, Laverne and Shirley member, Marion, and Lady Di was so drunk, disgusting drunk. That uh, at one point, a, a snowman, guy in a big fuzzy snowman suit, and um, she went up to the carrot-like nose on this snowman, <laughs> Lady Di, all drunk and disgusting, and starts sucking on the nose. 
She's giving a hummer to the nose of the, the snowman. And there's a close-up picture here where all you see is a reddish-orange thing in her hand and her big, fat face wrapping her lips around it with fur on the other end. It looks like bestiality pictures that I have seen on the Internet. But before they dump out, it's just a carrot. Right, it's a carrot. As 2001 turned into 2002, Di would call in several times. And each time she called in, she was berated by Anthony for her drinking problem and transgressions at bar 9. One of these phone calls in early January was especially disturbing because of Di's obvious intoxication and the hysterical way in which she responded to the hosts. Hello? <laughs> Oh, she's how are ya? Oh no! Why? How, who gave her this line? How are ya, Lady Di? How are ya? Oh, oh, shut up! She can't even do it right. How are ya? Hey, you drunk? How you doing? Hey, hey, hey! Stop it, Anthony! Please. You sound stop hammered right, right now. Anthony, You're Anthony, drunk right it. now. Ugh, what? you disgust me. Listen, what? listen to her. You're drunk. Rick says she's close no, to tears. No, I am not drunk. <clears throat> Lady Di, you're drunk. No, I am not. And you're annoying. What's we had a we had a gig oh, down maybe, at Bar Nine. Stop, you know Bar Nine? Yeah, right down on Ninth. Yeah. And uh, we're we're there. My brother's there, so we're getting up on stage. We're playing some music oh and stuff. Oh my God! Anthony, and Lady Di Anthony, gets up on Anthony, the stage stop, and becomes Anthony, the most annoying right twat. Anthony, she's well, drunk and right she's now. singing. Blah, right blah. She wouldn't Anthony, shut up. Anthony, See this? This is what I heard all night. Right now, she and she, cause I, she's drunk again. She, she's crying. Anthony. She doesn't have to go on stage. You're, Anthony, crying. please stop oh. it right now. You're hammered. Oh, she's crying. I am not hammered. Stop your whining. The midget's private crying. pile. Is, shut up. The, you disgust me. Anthony, this is not right. Oh, she's crying. Oh, oh, shut up. The midget's Anthony, Opie, Opie, save me, please. Oh, Opie, save me, please. When Di and Marion made their return to the studio in January of 2002. Di would try to preempt a discussion of her alcoholism by announcing without provocation that she was drinking water. Marion would come to her friend's defense by saying that Di was turning over a new leaf and joining a health club, but also added that she didn't speak to Di for two weeks because of her behavior at the Christmas party. Perhaps the most interesting bit of information to come from this appearance was the revelation that at one point Di had been in the Navy. What did you was, do was, in the was, Navy? That was a while ago. I got on an honor roll and that was it. What yeah. did you do in the Navy? What was your I MOS? Was a cook. In the Navy. You were a cook. <laughs> did the sailors Seriously? get any of the food? Yeah, really. <laughs> did, is that why you did. got discharged? I was a good cook, too. You were the, a cook in me. the Navy on a ship? This was years ago. Was it on a ship? Um, no. It was on a base. How many, Where? How many years ago? What base? In Florida. What? 20 years ago. 20 years ago? It was a long time ago. <laughs> it was Thank a you, Mary. What? How long were you in? <laughs> For about... Two years. And what happened that you got discharged? I just got an honorable discharge. That's why? Right. Did you get caught with a jelly donut in your foot locker? <laughs> <laughs> no. Because I'm hungry, sir! Di and Marion would make a handful of appearances over the next seven months, but nothing of note would transpire until August 9th. During this appearance, only Marion was in the studio, because of a 90-day ban placed on Di due to her failure to bring anything interesting to the show. As a result, Di was tethered outside of the studio, where her side of the conversation was inaudible. Di's compulsive lying would surface when the boys discussed the subject of an upcoming appearance Di and Marion planned to do at WYSP alongside comedian Rich Voss and show regular Frenchie. I like what I hear you're oh. doing a gig I, I, yeah, I, with I hope. Rich Voss we're doing something and with Frenchie. We're doing something. I don't know what we're doing. How much are they paying? You're going I don't know. That's something or that's are you Diana. just giving them your shirt Look to hold Di the event inside of? Wait. Look at Lady Di. She I don't goes, know. She goes, I really no. don't. She goes, she goes, no. Ask her. She knows No, more. you absolutely do, she you lying more. sack of crap. Lie. You big fat liar. Listen to me. You do know. You're lying again. She you're knows. a compulsive She's drunk a liar. liar. You're a compulsive liar. Yes, you you're are. a compulsive liar. She's what a is liar. She lying? How she much lie? how much money are you getting for this appearance that you're doing with and don't uh, lie. boss and Frenchie? How much? How much? How, how much? much? How much? I was told a couple of hundred dollars. So why would you lie about that? Why lie? Why not just go, ah, they're going to give me this? Why? Most people turn to other stuff. She goes out and walks because she's got problems. I bet you know? she pockets all the appearance right money now, and, give, and gives you nothing. Right That's why she was holding fine. it. That's but why I'm she saying, didn't want yep. you to know but how I'm much you were making because that. she's taking your cut of no, the money. Yep. No. She's Guaranteed. That. That's why. Guaranteed she's taking your cut of the money. Yep. That's why she didn't want you to know, Strong Boys. I don't care what she takes. 
However, this was Dai's last appearance on the show for over two years. Due to the Sex for Sam 3 controversy, Opie and Anthony were forced by Infinity Broadcasting to sit out the remainder of their contracts, and would only return to the air after signing with XM Satellite Radio in 2004. When Dai eventually made her return to the show, it appeared that her life had deteriorated dramatically. During the interim period, Dai had lost her job at the Budweiser bottling plant. Although the exact reason she was laid off is unknown, it was mentioned that she had been out of work for two years. On November 2nd, fellow guest Stalker Patty called in to tell Owen Day that she was trying to get Dai a job at a local diner. <laughs> All right, yeah, so uh, we're at the Brooklyn Diner, and big surprise, you were there also yesterday. You are there every morning getting your, what, tea? My coffee and muffins. You get a coffee and a muffin. It's prepaid at the Brooklyn Diner. Everything <laughs> I do is prepaid. <laughs> and uh, you came over and said hi. And yes, then you, I did. you told us that you're trying to get Lady Di a job, huh? Yeah, she's terribly lazy. And uh, I called her last night. She didn't even get anywhere writing down her resume. All she's got to write on a piece of paper is everything she's done. All right. So that I know. What she's got to do is write everything she did. All right, listen. So, how did you get involved with Lady Di's uh, awful life? Well, she was telling me she hasn't worked in two years, which to me is ridiculous. Most people find a job within three to six months. Hey, you know? Yeah, it's not always ridiculous to not work for two years, okay? Don't rub it in. Later in the show, Di herself called in, sounding inebriated. Early on, it was apparent that Di was not alone, and quickly handed the phone off to one of her guests, a man named Howie. Aside from being genuinely hilarious, Howie provided an insight into Di's situation that the drunken compulsive liar would not have otherwise. Di is uh, See what just this is all waking about. up. She needs a job, and uh, I guess she's going to start her job search soon. Let's see what this is all about. Yeah, definitely. Hold on, hold on. Lady yeah. Di, are you going to find... Howie? Howie! <laughs> uh, me and Lady Di were hanging out all night. <laughs> I thought threw her a good one. Hey. Hey, Howie, up? what's up? What's up, brother? How do you know Lady Di? Uh, from a friend. What do you mean from a friend? My friend Chris knows. Did knows you sleep her, over there last I night? Know her. Did you sleep over last night? Oh, yeah. I'm here for a while. <laughs> you're here for a while? Why? Why not? So you're just hanging out over at her place? Yeah, we're hanging out, having a good time. All right, Howie, be honest. Did you guys have some action last night? W did we have what? Action. A little action? No. You're Why just, not? You're just... I ain't dealing with that. <laughs> I got action with other girls. <laughs> I ain't dealing with that. Why wouldn't you deal with that with Lady Di? Oh, uh, I have standards. How does she look in the morning? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> he's freeloading off of her and he's bashing her. What? Dude, you're freeloading off of her? Why would you want to be at Lady Di's house this morning? I'm freeloading. I'm just here for a party and having a good time. Uh, when did the party start? When? Yeah. Yesterday. And it's just a party with you two? No, my friend Chris. And, and why oh, is Chris threesome. there? Why is Chris there? Yeah, is anyone trying to Did bang Lady Di? Huh? Is anyone trying to bang her? Not me. Did Just... you guys go to bed yet? I I'm still up. They're sleeping. They're sleeping together? No. Chris <laughs> is on the couch. And I'm up. Dude, be honest with us. How? The tunes. Be honest with us. How much did Lady Di have to drink last night? A lot. Yep. Yeah, you know she has a drinking problem, right? So do I. <laughs> <laughs> when Di returned to the line, she acted evasively in response to questions about her employment and drinking problem. Stalker Patty would then call into the show and grill Di over her resume, which Di then drunkenly stumbled through for several minutes. All right, so what do you want me to do? All right, we got Starker Patty on the line. Starker Patty, go ahead. Talk to your friend, Lady Di. Okay, go ahead, Patty. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so when are you going to send me your uh, copy of your resume or experience that you've had? All you have to do is just write it on a piece of paper and just mail it to me. I gave you my address. Well, I have it right here. Do you, do you, want, me, do you want me to type it out for you? You don't have to type it. I'll do that for you. Just write it down. I just want to know what you've done in your life. Oh, wow. Uh, Lady Di, why don't you read off your resume for everybody? Okay. All right. All right. Summary. Production specialist with 17 years of experience, diverse, of diverse experience in f food production factory. What a mess. Ability to operate and run packers. 
On Tasia's Bugs machinery. <laughs> the guy's still going. Hold on. Okay, He's throwing so the same you line can, in. I, I, I can't talk. Oh, here. Why? No, because because my friend is eating something right now, and he's laughing at me. What's he eating? Your twat? Uh, Chinese food. Chinese food, okay. Oh, in the morning. <laughs> Chinese food. Cold Chinese food in her oh, place. drunk. <laughs> All right. Demonstrated ability to operate and run packers, uncasers, labelers, fillers, and other type of, of state-of-the-art food production robotic machinery. Look. <laughs> Look. A similar situation unfolded on November 10th when stalker Patty called into the show and the topic of Dai's resume was brought up again. Patty stated that she would go as far as to type the resume out if only Dai could write it down and send it to her. But eight days had passed since their previous on-air conversation and Dai had still failed to send the resume to Patty. When Dai called in to defend herself, Patty would reveal the reason Dai had potentially been so hesitant to commit to finding a job. The office will be finished before she gets that resume. <laughs> you know what Fat, she lazy told slug. Me. What? You, know, you know what she told me that really bothers me? She says that if she has a job, she'll lose her public assistance. Oh, you're one of those people. <laughs> oh, you'd rather stay on that. the welfare. And uh, that might be a hesitancy that you get so dependent on something, you know? Yeah, that's right, I'm Patty. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she doesn't want to lose her public assistance. So you, you'd rather stay on the welfare than uh, get a job? Well, you know, let me tell you something right now. I'm looking out there. Even if you're not familiar with the Lady Die story, you've probably already connected the dots and come to an alarming conclusion. How does a woman with a teenage son refuse to find a job for two years while having men over at her apartment smoking and drinking at all hours of the night? Just answer questions. Hey, just... As smoothly and as my that. Kids will be back over You're here. not fine. You can't. You can't smile and go. I'm fine. I'm fine. Things aren't fine. Wait, I just heard you. Accept that. You did lose your kid, right? No, I did not. But he's not living with you right now. Uh, well, actually, he's with my father, but I did not lose him. All right. Why is he with your dad? Because he's with my dad. I guess you know. Um, I don't know. They're right, more financially sad. stable right now over there. There's no. Well, then why don't you stop drinking and you can work that out? You got it. I think I should. Stop, stop drinking time. and having these guys over your house. Oh, well, you know. The guys are my friends. Oh, well, you know. Yeah, great friends. They stay up drinking and smoking all night. No, they don't. What's truly disturbing about this clip is that Di doesn't even try to come up with a lie as she normally would. It's as if she can't comprehend what's wrong with a 40-year-old woman letting her father raise her son because she doesn't want to stop drinking and partying long enough to get a job and take care of her kid. This would be the beginning of a cycle that would repeat itself nearly until Di's final appearance on the show. She would call in, Owen Day would berate her for being drunk, lazy, and a bad mother, and Di would lie compulsively. There was a brief moment when it appeared she might be open to the idea of rehab, but that hope was dashed when Di called in on the 28th of December, and we got a glimpse of how dire her situation had become. All right, uh, Lady Di, what's up? Hey, guys. What's going on with you guys? What are you doing? Hold on one second. Somebody wants to talk to you. Hold on. Hey. Hey. Yeah. You're Lady Dice friend. What's going on? Yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm renting a room here. All right. So what's the deal? Why Why are we talking to you on our radio program? I don't know. She's handing me the phone. All right, are you guys drinking tonight? Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 what, what, have you been up uh, all night? Oh yeah. And what's the uh, poison tonight? What are you what's drinking? The poison. Well, her poison is wine. Yeah. So she's a wino. All right. So um, be honest with us. How many days a week does Lady Di drink? How many days does yeah. she drink? Yeah. Every day. Every day, right? Yeah. She's yeah. been BSing us for a long time. And and you're telling me she drinks uh, a lot every every night of the week? Every day. All day long? 24 hours on Christmas. She drank for 24 hours on Christmas? Oh, yeah. The cops were here. What? Why did the cops show up? Because I wouldn't give her any more wine. Are and you, is she called the cops? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. No, Imagine that scene. I had to leave scene. for four hours. What? I had to leave for four hours. When Di got back on the line, she did little to exonerate herself from Howie's accusations. And despite calling 911 because Howie hit her wine, Di was reluctant to admit that she had a drinking problem. Do you understand now that when you call the police because you can't get your wine, that perhaps you have a drinking problem? 
Do you think you have a drinking problem? No. No. You're but drink- you're you're drunk calling the police because your wine was hidden. And, and, and you don't see that as a drinking problem. God, are you a mess. The conversation took an even more bizarre turn when Jim, the man who had been attempting to get Di to go to rehab, called into the show, too. Uh, ho- hold on. Let me... Jim? Yeah, hold on. I gotta Uh-oh. Do I don't want to talk to him. Oh, why? 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 I don't want to talk to him. Why? why? I don't want to talk to him. Because you feel all stupid, oh, don't you? Why well, don't you I want... Don't, I don't because... like him. I don't like him. Oh, I don't, don't want to hear, hear from, from you. Me. Wow. What a shame, Di. Yeah, why don't you want to hear from Jim? Care. I don't want to hear from him. Why? Because I don't want to hear from him. Why? Because he yells at me all the time. Hello? I'm right here. He would yell at you? Is that what you didn't like? I don't like that. Oh. Do you understand that? Why don't oh. you like it? What do you mean? I don't like people yelling at me. <laughs> Oh, here we go. No, what are you, what are you talking I don't about? Like that. Well, maybe you need to be yelled at to get it through your thick head. Did you have a, a hard time growing up and being yelled at? Did Daddy yell at you? Yes, I did. He he wanted a boy and he got a drunk girl instead. You know when my birthday was? When? April first. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was the problem? Why was he always shouting at you and berating you? Yeah. I have no idea. No clue. What, what would you be doing when he'd yell at you? Jim, I have no idea. The irony of the situation, of course, being that even though Di accused her father of being abusive towards her, she was willing to let him raise her son, rather than getting sober and assuming her own parental responsibilities. If this phone call wasn't weird enough, Di decided to dial things up a few notches towards the end by refusing to hang up in spite of the abuse hurled her way by Opie and Anthony. The son is living with the, your, your father who was so disappointed in you? My father. And your son is now living there because you're incapable of taking care of him as a mother? I guess, if you want to say that. All right, your life is a mess. Just, wow. say, just say your mom's box. All right, lady died. We got to go. We'll talk to you later. Yeah, I guess. Hi. Lady die. What? <laughs> <laughs> see? You see? I told you. Uh, <laughs> I'm on to you guys. On to what? On to what? Never mind. Hang up the phone. No. All right, then we'll hang up All on right. you. We'll, well, bo- we'll both hang up on the count of three, okay? On three, we hang up together, okay? okay. Two... One. One. Bye. Bye. Why didn't you hang up? <laughs> oh. Lady, did I hang up, please? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got to go. We got to go. All right, we'll just keep you there all day. I don't give a fuck. Okay. In a story as long and repetitive as Lady Dies, the individual moments start to lose meaning. After dozens upon dozens of conversations that all sound the same, it can be easy to forget specific details, but out of that melange, you start to notice patterns and themes. And one of the themes that stands out is Di's attachment to the show. In everyday life, Diana Orbani was a nobody, but people knew who Lady Di was. She could call into a radio show and the host would take her call and refer to her by name. Even though she couldn't even listen to the show because she didn't have a satellite radio, the fans who listened to the show every day knew who she was. When you look at the story through that lens, it's not particularly surprising that she was known to call into the show every day, sometimes spending hours on hold on her prepaid phone, regardless of whether they would put her on the air or not. This was how she decided to spend her life, rather than taking care of her own son. Drinking from the moment she woke up, and wasting most of her day calling into a radio show that abused her in exchange for the possibility of a few minutes of attention. The following day, an angry Marion called in to rebuke many of Di's lies. She claimed that Howie was a good guy who was trying to help Di get back on her feet, and countered Di's claim that her father was abusive. Most importantly, though, she stated that Di would not go to rehab to get her son back. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, can you I believe her? I mean, she her? is really a fucked up late, lately. She can't get her act together at all. Do you want to call her the C word? I'm, I'm saying fucked up person. I'm not calling her that. 
You don't want to call it the C word? No, because that's too harsh. But I keep telling her, knock the crap, do something. They want her to go to rehab to get her kid back, and she won't. She won't do nothing. She doesn't care about her kid? And you know something? Her kid is my godson. And you know what? She's mad now. She's mad at me in a way because, you know what? I got a my five for Christmas, and she can't listen to you guys only when she calls the show. Maybe Wait, Marriott. You, you, you're her godson, the kid's god, godmother. I'm the godmother. I've that's a very important. That's a very sacred uh, <laughs> thing. Oh, the Sicilian I'm, people. The kid's staying with her father, and her father's cool, so she can't say nothing bad about her dad. And her dad didn't do anything wrong to her when she was growing up. She's all bullshit, and you guys. Well, we know she's a compulsive liar, also. For the next few weeks, Di's son would become the focal point of the conversation whenever she called the show. Attempts to get any information out of her typically proved fruitless, as Di was reluctant to explain why her son was no longer with her. So the conversation would devolve into Opie, Anthony, and Jimmy calling her an unfit mother and an alcoholic. Do you know that you're a waste of space? Out of touch. I am not a waste of You do space. realize that, right? Well, you you offer that? nothing to yourself, nothing to your son, nothing oh, to your father, nothing to your friends, nothing oh, to society. Oh, you offer absolutely nothing. As mentioned earlier, this is a cycle that repeated itself to the point that it became a running joke on the show that every one of Di's phone calls sounded the same. Nevertheless, there were, mixed into the white noise that comprised the majority of her appearances, a few noteworthy revelations. And it wouldn't take long for another one of these bizarre details of Di's life to surface. It started on January 14th of 2005, when Opie asked Di if something ever happened to one of her roommates that resulted in Di or her other roommates being questioned. So how long have you been uh, living with roommates? With the roommate? Yeah. About a couple of months. No, but over the years you've had roommates, right? Um, well, my husband, my ex-husband. Is, is it true you had roommates when you were working at uh, Budweiser? Yeah, I had one roommate when I was working at Bud. Oh, you did. And what happened to that roommate? I don't know. <laughs> Liar. He stayed here for a couple of weeks. What? He stayed here for a couple of weeks and then he left. And then what happened to him? I don't know what happened to him. He Who's left, Opie. You never had a roommate that might have had something happen to him? No. Like what? What would happen to him over here? Never questioned by certain authorities? No. No, huh? I, I, well, I never had anybody, you know... I mean, he just took off. He just said, okay, I got I'm some, go. And I, I got said, some, okay, go. I got go some really good information. You're sure? Yeah. That you were never in a situation where one of your roommates had something uh, happen to them. No. And never. that you and maybe another roommate were questioned by the authorities. No. Di averred that she did not, but a little later in the conversation, Opie asked the same question again. This time, Di admitted her roommate had been questioned by the authorities at some point, but when pressed for more details, Di seemed confused and unable to provide a straight answer. It's supposed to be. <laughs> Did you ever have a roommate where something happened to him and you guys were uh, questioned? Yeah. Ah, uh, now it's yeah. No, now I got it's yeah. I got you really. Want me to tell you. I, listen, I got really good info. So we're gonna we're gonna gamble. Go ahead. You either tell the story. Or if you lie about it and we find out that it was true, then you're dead to us. Well, we're, 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 we're sick of your lies. I'm not lying to you. So instead of me giving the info to the entire country, why don't you tell everyone what happened to one of your old roommates? She says I'm not lying, yet she said no, 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 it didn't happen, it didn't My happen, old, nothing, nothing, nothing. And now... Old, wait, 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 hold on. The old roommate that I used to have over here... Right. ...left. Okay. No cops were called, nothing. What happened to him? He just left. He, he got a job and he left. That's it. How do you get a job if you, if you died? No, no one died over here. Three days later, Marion called in to ask Opie and Anthony to leave Di's son out of their arguments with her and stated that Di's son was better off living with her father. However, the conversation took a bit of a turn when Opie asked Marion the same question he had asked Di about something happening to one of her roommates or boyfriends. No, I'm Marion. He really is. He's doing good. Marion, really fast because uh, I think Lady Di was lying to us. Did she ever have a roommate or a friend or an ex boyfriend that uh, died? No. Nothing like that. No, she. I'm going to tell you. Um, Peter's father died. Who's Peter? Uh, her son. Her son's father died years ago. 
but they weren't together when they when he died. Was it under any type of wacky circumstances? No, they were not together. But how did he die? He um, long story, but he got sick and died. Of what? Of die. No, he did. He had a lot of problems, and he was in and out of hospital. He just, just huh? going back when, when the kid was a baby. So there, there's no one that may have been involved with a train. Uh, no. Hmm. All right, because this story gets more and more interesting, and that's the only reason we have you on today, by the way. Although Opie and Anthony obviously knew more than they were letting on, Marion continued to be vague about how the father of Di's son had died. Only moments later, the full details were revealed when Opie read an email from Stalker Patty. Uh, Stalker Patty, who has become friends with the retarded Laverne Shirley, wrote um, an email to Ben, and she writes, if she's listening, maybe she could... Uh, give us a quick call. I had a talk with Lady Di. Oh, I hope I'm not crossing the line on this. I think the incident that you guys are referring to was brought up with her on the that was brought up with her on the air involved a boyfriend she had 15 years ago. Well, she was that was Peter's father. But she got pregnant by him and had her son. Soon after, they broken up and she never saw him again. In Oct October, around the last two weeks of. What? In October, around the last two weeks of October 2001, to be exact, this guy committed suicide by jumping in front of a train. I don't know if he did that, but he did die. The story was reported in the Star Ledger. Oh! Which is a, uh, a New Jersey newspaper. He did die, though, but he was... You say that again, I'm going to throw a CD at your fat face. I'm trying we to tell you something, though. He, did, he took, took care of his kid until he died. After several more minutes of interrogation... Miriam finally admitted that she knew about Di's ex-boyfriend's suicide, proving that she had been withholding information. <laughs> he had other problems, and he decided to end it all, okay? Yeah. Although train jokes had become a staple of Di's future appearances, little was gained from the revelation that the father of her son committed suicide by standing in front of a train. Di's appearances on the show quickly returned to the previously mentioned cycle, with only meager bits of new information being revealed over a period of weeks. Such as Di's estimate that her welfare would be running out in a few months, in Marion's statement that Di was undergoing some vaguely defined job training program. After a period of almost four months of this drivel, Opie, Anthony, and Jim were fed up with Di's excuses and compulsive lying, and the situation came to a head on February 22nd of 2005. Did you or did you not a find a job? I'm still looking for a job. I oh, have to class today. stop it. No, I've been filling out applications. There was a place that called me up yesterday. And what place was that? So this is this is a, another job agency, and they said to keep in touch, like uh, like once every few days, basically, um, you know, for for them to uh, there's there's a job that's close by, so for them to, you know, give me a job. And Even the so. people with the the kindest hearts that listen to this program are not buying your crap anymore. It's the truth. It's not the truth. <laughs> yes, it is. In the typical fashion, the conversation turned to Di's son and why he didn't live with her. But this time, the boys would not let Di off the hook. They badgered her with questions about her son until Di gave something resembling an answer as to why her son was living with her father. Why, why, is, why isn't he with you? Well, you know, well, first of all, first of all, my father's house, okay, is probably a lot better for him. It's bigger. And, and the reason you don't have a better place is because you don't have a job that can pay for it. No. So the reason you don't have your kid is because you don't have a job, because you can't pay for a child. Okay, whatever you say. So well, that, that's, that's what it is. True. So you're, you're in a flop house, basically, with other drunks. No. And you, and you, got, and you got a no. responsibility out there. you got a son. When pressed for more details about the direction her life was heading in, Di stated that she was seeing a therapist. But the credibility of these therapy sessions was immediately cast into doubt when Di admitted that she had not told the therapist about her drinking problem. Undeterred, the boys continued to grill Di about her son until she had finally admitted that she let her father raise him because she didn't have the money. He had no choice, that's obvious. Yeah, what was the straw that broke the camel's back as far as him going, look, you gotta give me the kid? What happened? Did you say I'm broke? I can't support well, that. Uh, well, I did. Uh, right, well, I have no. I didn't have any money. That's for sure. Uh huh. So, so I mean, you know, my father. My father is a, a well provider for him. The selfishness and absolute absurdity of Di's situation was perhaps best articulated by Jim Norton. If you protected your son the way you protect your alcoholism, you'd be a good mother. It's possible that something about this particular beating managed to get through to die on some level, because over the next seven months, she was actually able to find a job working at Dunkin' Donuts. 
Sadly, the hope that Di would make a lasting change and reunite with her son was dashed when she called into the show on December 27th. First of all, what did you get your son for Christmas? I got my son a lot of things for Christmas. Like a what? lot of things. Name the best thing that he got. From his mom. Well, he got souvenir cars. From you? What? Yes. What are those? And, you know... And, and what are those? The things you buy in the gas station, like in a Hess? No. Oh, a Hess no. truck? No. Not a Hess truck. What are those no, things? No, he had, he had plenty of those. What did you get your son? What did you, you get him? you barely see because you're an alcoholic. And you're a horrible mother. What do you mean I'm an alcoholic? Your son doesn't live with you. What did you get your son for Christmas? I got my. I told you what I got my son. I got him souvenir, you know, souvenir cars and stuff like Please that. Please send What's his address so we can give him a real car. Christmas. What okay. is a souvenir? What is car? a souvenir you want a car? What's a souvenir car? I don't even know what that is. First of all, I no longer live in Westfield. You I'm said that. Too expensive for me. Do you live with your son? No, I do not. Still I'm not. I'm going to stop calling our show and call your son. And How stop long? Drinking. I call my son stop all the drinking time. so maybe you can give him a real Christmas one day. I call him all the time and I gave him a real Christmas for so many years and he still has real Christmases. No, he doesn't. His it's mom hard. got him fucking awful souvenir cars. Oh, come on. You know what the you best know what else I got him, The man? best present you could give him is to stand on the path tracks. <laughs> exactly. No, Just like no, dear old dad. <laughs> wrong. wrong. Choo choo. <laughs> Goodbye. I'll talk to you later. What else did you get him? Hold on. But the souvenir cars and what else? The souvenir cars and whatever else I'm going to get him. Well, I, going I'm, to get him. That's going right. to get him. I hope you're fucking Jewish. Uh, look, look. How hey, much did you spend? Not, how much were the souvenir cars, Lady Di? How much how, were how they? How much were the souvenir yes, cars? Yes, ask me the question again and then give me... How much is quite a bit? They were quite a how bit. How much? A couple hundred dollars. You're lying. I'm not, uh, you're no, lying, I'm... you're lying through your tequila well, worm. What did I tell you? <laughs> well, I hope, uh... The truth! It quickly became apparent that Di was lying about the presents she allegedly bought for her son. And to make matters worse, Marion admitted that Di didn't even spend Christmas with her son. Although the excuse changed from Di needing to work on Christmas to not being able to find transportation to her father's house. Before Marion's presence could cause the show to descend into utter chaos, the boys once again questioned Di about the events surrounding the death of her son's father. After more vague and evasive answers, Di finally admitted that he had committed suicide. Just, I mean, you know, obviously it's not pleasant, but what exactly did he do? Well, what he did was he committed suicide and he went in front of a train. This would be Di's last appearance on the show for four months, during which her life deteriorated at an unprecedented rate but the downward spiral would produce some of the most memorable moments in the entirety of her story. Uh, Lady Di. Yes, do me a favor. Yeah. Can you raise a, a fund for me, Westbeck.com? Please? No one requests the funds. They usually come up because people have sympathy for somebody. <laughs> no one really has much sympathy for you because we've tried to help you in the past, and you've been so stupid and arrogant and lying to no, yourself. I'm not lying to anybody. I'm You're lying. a drunkard. You're a drunk. We told you, we told you, we're going to lose your fucking house and everything in your life. And look, ta-da! As everyone associated with Di had predicted, she was homeless and living on the streets by April of 2006. The same day that Di called the show and begged O and A to start a fund for her on Whackbag.com, Marion called in to set the record straight. Uh, back in January, she went into rehab. Um, they gave her medication to take, you know, to get off the alcohol. She couldn't handle it, and she just wanted out. She went a little nutsy at the end of, you know, at the end of the 28-day program that she was supposed to go through. At the end, of, I figured be, beginning of February, she started to tell me about this medication that they give you to wean you off the alcohol. I know all about it, right? I said, we'll take it. She was taking something else, too, for her anxiety. I says, this is to help you. I says, take it. I said, stop being nervous. Stop worrying about this, this, how you feel. If it's too strong, ask for something else, right? So two weeks later, I get a phone call, right? Yeah. She says to me, Marion, I couldn't handle it anymore. I'm out. I said, what do you mean you're out? She says, they found something. They give you blood tests, I guess, every week or whatever. Yeah. And I, I said, what do you mean? Boring. Yeah. I said, well, what do you mean they found something? They found benzoids in her blood, which wasn't connecting with the medication. I said, what the fuck are you doing? In addition to saying that Di had been kicked out of rehab, 
Marion disclosed that Di had been fired from Dunkin' Donuts for showing up to work drunk, had been mugged while panhandling, and was currently in a relationship with the man she met at the Salvation Army. She liked this guy that she's hanging with so much that this guy leaves her. Believe him, this guy fucking leaves her at train station in Elizabeth behind Pathmark. She's sleeping with all of these fucking homeless people. <laughs> yes. Later in the day, Di herself called the show. And in spite of her attempts to lie, she ended up confirming most of Marion's claims. When the boys asked the obvious question about how Di was getting alcohol when she had no income, Di put her friend Frank on the phone. However, Frank, who appeared to be suffering from some kind of mental illness, was more interested in talking about his friend's baseball team than whether or not Lady Di was prostituting herself. He already said he's not banging her. Oh, he's not banging? You're not banging it? No, no. Is, is anybody banging Lady Di on the tracks? Yeah, 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 I don't know about all that, but uh, yeah, I was for yeah. So she, she has sex on the tracks with the people up there? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that poetic, a train on a train track? And, and that's to get money? Yeah, she's right. She tries to get money so she can, uh, you know... So she gives, survive. so she gives blowjobs or, or uh, well, I don't know all right now. I don't, like I said, I'm only new with her, and I ain't trying to go that way. I but was, but how do you how do you know that? Has she told you that she has had sex uh, for money on the tracks? No, he used to be on my baseball team. Uh, he was the cleanup batter. Wait a minute, so wait this a minute. Guy's this guy's all guy, over the place. He's, and he's home, so he's schizophrenic. Di would again beg Opie and Anthony to start a fund for her on Whackback. But when urged to tell the truth about having sex with hobos in exchange for alcohol, she hung up. The scope of Lady Di's homeless life was put on full display when a pair of amateur videographers ventured into the homeless camp behind the pathmark to document her living situation. The men, who called themselves General Bam and Sergeant Magoo, and hailed from FullBlownAids.com, arrived before Lady Di, and thus interviewed several of her homeless compatriots. And uh, how long has Lady Di been here for? Uh, approximately a month and a half. Her living conditions, as you can see, are plurable. It's very sad and very plurable. She's been doing have, him, have too. You had, have you had sex with Lady yes, Di? Yes, he has. Honestly? Yeah. You've, you've had sex with Lady Di? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Because she woke up one day with her pants down her ankles and a pony <laughs> No, she didn't even remember, though. She was the only one. You weren't the only one? No. How many others did you say? One, two, three, four, that you know of. I mean, you know. Six. Just six total. About, One, about, two. About six. Three. About six. Lady Di is going to kill us. Three, three, three I know of for sure. Kill us? Three you know of for sure? Yeah. When Lady Di eventually made her presence known, she was visibly dirty. Open oh, Anthony, them please. you got to help me out. You have to help me out. Because I don't know how much longer I could live like this. <laughs> After once again begging Opie and Anthony for assistance, Di would admit to having an intimate connection with a man known as the Romeo of the Railroad. Are you two, you know, intimately involved with each other? On a mutual, on an adult basis, you know, not anything nasty or anything. But... <laughs> there goes Romeo of the Railroad! Upon their return to the Pathmark adjacent shantytown, Di confirmed the claims about her relations with other vagrants. Is there a reason why that bed is broken? Yeah, yeah they've been fucking too much. Times. Another guy. <laughs> they've been fucking too much. Poor her. He broke it. Thank you, baby. I'm the one that brought it up here. Yeah, you know, like, we broke it. I made six dollars. Hey. Once settled in and properly libated, Di opened up to questions about her current condition. Although, as usual, her answers were evasive, and she took no responsibility for her own predicament. Was drinking an issue also that took up a lot of your money? Nah, I don't know. How much, uh, spending, how much are you spending a week on alcohol? I don't know. <laughs> Should I be honest about this? Absolutely, be honest. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, ten dollars a day. On alcohol? Ten dollars a day. Drugs and wine every day. Ten dollars a day. And you, and you, is that why you lost your job because of drinking? No. <clears throat> no, I just, I, I just decided not to go back. That's all. How did you lose your job with Budweiser? Come on, be honest. Tell us that, the truth. That's a really soft issue right there. I had the job 17 years. I know, and it, and it hurts that they, they fired you. Why? why? Let, let your story be known. Did you mess up? Because I had I had a back pain. I went, to, uh, I went to see the nurse. And when I went to see the nurse, they decided, instead of me seeing the nurse, they decided, 
okay, she's going to sue the place and to just say bye-bye. That's it. That's the reason they fired you, you think? The documentary ends by following Lady Di on one of her panhandling excursions. After a brief encounter with the police, we get an unexpected insight into how manipulative Di can be, as she begs strangers for money outside of a fast food joint. I make more. We hit him on the way out. Do you want the way in? Hi, hon. Can you spare any change, please? I'm homeless. Any change? What are you trying to get? Something to eat or something to drink? You're trying to get something to eat or something to drink. They're from Opie and Anthony. Oh. You know Opie and Anthony are? I heard you guys on the radio. Yeah, this, she's Lady Die. She's the one. Lady Die, go get whatever you need. Thank you, baby doll. Have a good one. <laughs> you too, man. Another four months went by before Die was able to get herself off the streets. When she called into the show in August of 2006, she had found a place to live and a temp job working in a warehouse. But she was still at home drinking beer with a homeless crack whore at 8.30 on a Monday morning. For most people, being homeless for several months would probably be a pretty eye-opening moment. A reason to examine their life and figure out the changes they need to make to never end up in the same position again. Not Lady Di, though. She was insistent that she needed to take baby steps, none of which involved getting sober. She said you drink every day. You, she says you drink every day. And you're not, uh, you're living in like a rooming house with a bunch of uh, drunks and drug addicts. No, 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 no. Everybody over here is really cool. Everybody Ugh, over here is really, nice. What do you know about cool? You're an absentee mother. What do you mean really cool? Stop talking like it's 1967. Yeah, that sounds 16. fun. All right, Lady Di. Jim, 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 listen to me. Oh listen to God. me. I'm listening. I've been listening. All you do is lie. Just keep drinking. Or you take adult steps again. Shut up with the baby steps. You either drink or you don't. Just stop. Stop speaking needing of, to yeah. be coddled speaking and have of, your fat chin tickled. Speaking of baby steps, miss a few more of your sons. You know, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, how do you know what baby steps look like? You were in a blackout while he took them. <laughs> In another sad display of her attention-craving obsession with the show, Di called back into the program sounding even more intoxicated than before. However, her attempt to pick on Jim Norton was a giant flop that added nothing to the show. So they ended up playing the silent game with her until she hung up. Hello! Uh. Di's obsession did not diminish in the following two months. If anything, it became worse, as mentioned by Opie when they put her on the air in late November. Hi. Uh, let's say hi to Lady Di. Lady Di, what's up? How you doing, guys? Better why? now that you called, dear. Why are you calling us every day? Why? I need to know why. I don't, I don't call you every day. Every day. No. Every day. But we don't throw you on the radio. But you're calling every day. Why? Why are you calling because us? Because I love you. Look, look, look. Let me tell you something right now. I love you guys. And so does Marion. Well, Both of us oh, love God. you guys. Thanks. Well, I don't love you. You're not even a. Okay. You're not even a thought. You have to love me. You're not a, even a thought in my head when I'm when I'm not doing this radio show. Oh my God! You, I tried to get through to you on free FM, everything like that. You're trying to get through through. every day. Why? What do you have to, for this program? I mean every, no, I'm not trying. To We're get moving on with day. new characters. We don't need you anymore. Yeah. Oh, we used you. We got good radio God. out of you, and and that's it. Yeah. What do you want to say, Di? You, you got the floor. You you used us, and you got the radio out of us. What do you want to say? What do you want to say? Go. I want to say, I want to say hello to you guys. Well, well we're doing fine. a radio show. It was not uncommon for Di to call the show for no other reason than to say hi or that she loved the boys. In fact, as this video has shown, her aimless blathering was the norm. But by now, Opie, Anthony, and Jim were tired of this and largely wanted nothing to do with her. So they wasted no time insulting and degrading her. I just wanted to find out. So, Lady Di, do Di you, you're drunk. Do you swallow or spit the hobo cum? Everyone wants to know. Hobo. Let's get into some real questions here. Yeah. Do you swallow or spit, or maybe uh, just as a goof to make everyone laugh, you gargle it a little bit? As it was a Monday morning and Di was already drunk, the conversation once again turned to her alcoholism. Di attempted a feeble defense of her drinking, but ultimately admitted that she was doing nothing to curb her alcohol consumption. Answer, answer my fucking question. You don't see right. a problem that you're drinking this early in the morning. Yes, I do. 
All right. So why are you why are you doing it? Uh, because I don't know. I just figured I'd get up and have a beer. Because you don't know. Do you understand? Most people don't think like that. Uh, why do you think you Some think like that? Do. Why Some don't you say do. it? Say it. Say it. Why do you say? Why do you do it? I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. You, right. What are you doing about it, Lady Di? What are you doing about it? Uh, well, uh, not really much. Mulling right it now. over with a couple of beers. Yeah, no, I want to know what you what are you doing about it. Opie asked a very good question. What are you doing about it? Uh, n nothing much, really. But then why did you just say you were doing something about it? I, I don't know. What, what can I do about it? From here, the call becomes pretty vicious. Jim Norton, in particular, spends much of the conversation telling Di that her son must hate her for being an alcoholic flop of a mother. Because you're, you're fucking bumbling around from shitty temp job to shitty temp job, and everybody has reached out and tried to help you and get you into a rehab, and you're a self-centered fuck, and you don't care about your own kid, and your fucking ex-boyfriend didn't give a shit about the kid, so he fucking bit the fucking front end of a train to get away from you. That's how awful you are. That guy abandoned his own kid to get away from you, you self-centered, drunken I, I son. Never, Shut your I face. Your that. kid hates your guts. He doesn't love you. He doesn't think it's charming that mom walks in. You're not a charming drunk. You're a dirty-faced, horrible-toothed, bad-breath fucking sot, and he hates your guts deep down. He resents you. What's your son's name there, uh, Lady Di? We forget. Peter. Peter. Peter yeah. hates Walk you. In. This prompted Marion to call into the show and ask the boys to leave Di's son out of the discussion. But as the conversation progressed, it became obvious that Marion was enabling Di's behavior by making excuses for her drinking problem. Uh, Marion, are you working on what you're going to say at Lady Di's wake? No, because you know why Diane doesn't oh, drink as much as she stop. used to, okay? You know what you are? Oh, you're, you're an, an enabler. enabler. I was going to say it. You're an enabler, Marion. You're a codependent slob you're, and an enabler. Your friend is she's drunk on a enabler. Monday morning. It's not her fault. And you're going to sit there and say she doesn't Ew. drink as much? Ew, it's not her it's fault. not her fault. Shut your fat face. Predictably, though, the addition of Marion to the dynamic transformed it into a cacophony of bird brain yammering. Amidst the chaos, Opie made a fairly astute observation about the role of Di and Marion on the show. Marion, here's a taste of reality. You used to do some uh, fine bits with Lady Di, yeah, absolutely. But then yeah, Lady Di's drinking time. got completely out of hand. Where she lost her kids, she lost her job, she lost no, a sense no, no, of reality. No, no, no. Where she was in, where she ended up living on the track, sucking on hobo cock and swallowing hobo cum. And that's the only thing that is now interesting about Lady Di, and that's why she continues to be on the show. But as far as doing bits for this fine show called the Opie and Anthony Show, it's it's long over. Yeah. When Marion finally hung up, O and A decided to pretend that Di was no longer on the line. As the boys ignored her presence, Di was left to helplessly plead for attention in what was a surprisingly poignant reflection of her years-long obsession with the show. All right, so we're going to take a break, and then we're going to continue with the Opie and Anthony show with this uh, Kramer thing. Listen, right, listen, uh, Opie, the Michael Richards Opie. Kramer uh, thing with Opie. the N-word tirade on stage at the Laugh Factory in L.A. And by the way, a special surprise. Yeah? Uh, we have some delicious cupcakes. Oh, over. no, she did not. Kate Girl's back? Yeah, but she had a problem last <laughs> oh, week. Yeah. Um, which is why she was on her way over with cupcakes. And then, uh, you See, know. So, this is why we don't need Lady Di anymore. We got new characters to yeah. exploit. Yep. No, cake, no, cake you, Lady no, or gir cake, cake Girl. You need me. Cake Girl rules. Yeah. Cake? She girl made an awful, rules. awful cake. Yeah. It was, exactly. it was just a, a horror. Di did make one final call into the show in late 2006. But after stating that she was going to buy her son a $50 gift certificate for Christmas, she was quickly hung up on. This marked Dai's last appearance on the show for nearly seven years. During this period of time, Dai's life would change very little. But her return to the show in 2013, and the events that followed, are still considered by many Opie and Anthony fans to be the last great saga in the show's history. As always, I want to thank you for watching the video as well as liking, commenting, and subscribing. Initially, it was my intention to cover Lady Di's story in one video, but I started to realize that it was simply going to be too long. And it was also taking forever to sort through all of Lady Di's appearances on Opie and Anthony. If you're familiar with her story, you know just how tiresome it can be to listen to, especially all of the appearances back to back. It is mentally exhausting, but we still have more to go. Part two is going to catch up with Di in 2013, 
when she returns to the show. We'll cover the super shows, the internship, and probably everything that came after it. There are only a few issues that I'm debating on covering and where to put them and what to do with them, but I hope you guys enjoy what I have in store for you either way. If you want to support the channel, check out the links in the description. And also, I'd like to give a special thanks to my supporters on Patreon, who help make these videos possible. So thank you, Bone CK, Dan Thomas, Der Patronus, Mike Robals, James Taylor, CP, The Son of Man, Neem, Origami Fleshlight, Kevin Howard, Medication Doesn't Work, and Jackie. In the first episode of this series, we delved into the murky origins and subsequent downward spiral of Diana Lady Di Orbani how she went from a fan of Opie and Anthony with a seemingly stable life to a delinquent mother who ended up living on the streets. For a period of six and a half years, Lady Di would not appear on the Opie and Anthony show. What happened during that time frame still largely remains a mystery, and only fragments of the story have ever come to light. However, in May of 2013, Lady Di decided to call into the Opie and Anthony show again. The events that followed would go down in Opie and Anthony history as one of if not the best bits the show has ever produced. Because Lady Di still didn't have an XM radio, she unintentionally called into the Opie and Anthony Post show, hosted by alchemical experiment gone wrong, Sam Roberts. This seemed irrelevant to Di, though, as she resumed her inane babbling as if she had never stopped appearing on the Opie and Anthony show. Um, I just want to let you know that we met Ron Jeremy yesterday. You did? Well, I'm glad that you're calling. Now, Lady Di, it's been, uh, it's been years since you've been on the Opie and Anthony show. Many years. Yeah, How long has it been? Uh, oh, my God. Ever since 2001 or two or something like that. Right. And uh, why now would you call and announce to the world that you met Ron Jeremy? Well, because, well, well there's two reasons. Because I miss those guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have the XM satellite radio, so I can't even listen to them. The the one that has the XM satellite is Marion. Right. Not you, Lady yeah. Di. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't have it yet. No. As the conversation progressed, it became clear that Di's life had remained virtually unchanged since they had last spoken to her. Di seemed characteristically confused during this phone call and failed to give consistent dates for anything possibly because of her compulsive lying or her deteriorating mental faculties. Either way, we learned several things about her living conditions that I will go over briefly here. She was no longer homeless, but still lived in Elizabeth, New Jersey, and shared an apartment with a man who allowed her to live there for free. When questioned about her relationship, sexual or otherwise, with his man, Di was vague and stated that he let her live there because he liked her. Even though Di gives conflicting dates, it seems that the man in question was the one she was living with back in 2006 when Di said she needed to take baby steps to address her drinking problem. Speaking of which, Di was still not sober. She was doing nothing with her life other than watching the Monkees TV show and had been out of work for four years. This raised some obvious questions about what Di was doing for money, which resulted in a disturbing answer. What do you do for an income? Um, for the income. The income, the money, the, uh, the beer money as it were. Uh um, I, I really don't want to mention this. Go ahead. All right. Um, for the income right now, right. I'm living off of my dad's money. Oh, did your dad pass away? Yes, he did. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, wait, don't please don't tell Owen a that. I won't. It's between uh -huh. you. It's between you and I, Lady Di. It's this is an intimate conversation. Right, right. So that's the only income I have right now. Okay. The inheritance Di received will be a thread that runs through this entire video, so try to keep it in the back of your mind. Needless to say, this revelation prompted a response from noted mother abandoner, Anthony Cumia, who was listening to the after show on his way home. Now, the weird thing, don't even worry about it, Lady Di. I mean, we're just catching up, figuring out what's going on in your life. And actually, I got a text from Anthony, of all people. Anthony from Opie and Anthony, who writes, ha ha ha. Her dad's money, she's a fucking bum. Oh, no, get out yeah. of here. No, that's what he said. Yeah, on the text message. He's probably just joking, though. I don't see an LOL, but I think he's just kidding. Although this conversation did produce a few new pieces of information, it's remarkable how similar it is to every other Lady Di phone call. I didn't devote much time specifically to the tropes of Lady Di phone calls in Part 1, 
but virtually every single one involved Di making up excuses for her drinking and unemployment. In six years, nothing had changed, and when she was questioned about looking for work, her answer was almost identical to something she would have said over a decade ago. Why, why is it taking you so long to get a cash register person job? I don't understand. Uh, no problem. No problem. I have no idea because every, um, every store that I go to, everything that I go to, they either have the computers, um, you have to sit there for 45 minutes um, right. you know, to fill out applications and stuff like that. You don't have that kind of time? Why? Is the monkeys on? <laughs> They're on on the weekends. Oh, oh. so during the week, you couldn't could, you, you could take... Even, you could even tell Anthony that one, too. Right. Okay, well, good. I mean, he'll really get a kick out of that. And if you're listening, the monkeys are on on the weekend. Now... The question is... And during the week is the Partridge family. Of course it is. The question is, if you have time to watch shows that are literally 30 and 40 years old, do you not have 45 minutes out of your day to fill out a job application? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Perhaps because of how random and out of the blue this phone call was, it grabbed the attention of Opie and Anthony, and by the next day they were already saying they wanted to have Lady Di in the studio again. Later that day, Di called in for the second time since her hiatus, and it didn't take very long for the show to fall into the familiar rhythm of asking Di about her job search, with predictable results. I want, I want honest answers, Lady Di, because we've got to figure this, this out. What, why aren't you working? Why am I not working? Right. Because why all, are you not all, working? That's wait, the wait, question wait, wait, I wait, asked wait, that you just all. repeated. Yes. First of all, uh, okay, uh, I do fill out applications. Oh, yeah? When was the okay, last application? I have not been, the last application I filled out was about, um, oh, my God, uh, let, me, let me think, um, about maybe... Who was in office? Uh, about six months ago. <laughs> six <laughs> months Jesus. ago, you filled out an application. For where? At a liquor store. <laughs> at, at that's a the, liquor that's store. the one place she's applied because it's the place she mentioned yesterday right things took a more interesting turn when the conversation shifted to the old question of her relationship with her son who by this point was in his early 20s he's pretty happy where he is where is he uh, uh he lives in linden uh he have his own place no um no um uh my friend has her place over there so she's staying he's staying with her He's staying with a woman. Yeah. Of, are they are they sexually active? No, 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 no. I knew you were going to ask that. Wait, how well, old is I the have woman? To. How old's the woman? Uh, she's a little bit younger than me. How old? I'm not really sure her how old she is. Well, how old are you? You're 57, right? I'm 51. Okay. Um, so she's probably like 47. <clears throat> uh, maybe. I don't. I really don't know. As with everything related to Lady Di, it took several minutes of meandering to get to the point, but eventually Di gave a more direct answer as to how her son came to live with a woman twice his age that he was not related to. I apologize. Lady, Lady Di, I, I, we got to get back to, to your, uh, your boy there living with this woman. Yeah. How, did he, how did he find this woman? He knew her for a lot of years. My father knew her for a lot of years. How, and, and how did he, like, why did he choose her to live with? I, I don't, I, you know what, I can't answer these kind of questions. How long they, ago, they how long ago did he start living with her? Oh my God, ever since he was 13. However, Di's comments contradict statements she's made in the past, saying her son was living with her father when he was 15. They also contradict statements Di's son Peter made in a YouTube video testifying his faith in Christ from 2012. During the video, Peter said he was still living with his grandfather. According to Di, her father passed away in September of 2012, so that would mean Peter likely lived with them up until his death. The topic of Di's son was a natural way to transition to the issue of her inheritance. And this time, she provided slightly more specific details about the amount of money she was inheriting. Uh, he was 83 years old first. Oh, he was just older. Okay. Embarrassment. Yeah. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, he didn't die of embarrassment. Yeah, we know. Seriously. So what happened? No, wait. He died, and how, now he left you money, and I know you, that's helping you. Um, you had indicated that a long time ago. Did he leave you a lot of money? Oh well, I have uh, more money to go. Okay, we understand. More money, that. To more money go. coming to me. Oh, for, how for much? What? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, how do you? My, more... my brother, my brother has to take care of the lawyer. Hey, you might, You know, I don't want to get into that right now. Well, well we, we want, we, we're concerned about you. How do you have money coming? He's just are they just are they just kind of doling out the inheritance on a stipend for you? 
No. Um, what um, we had to do was, well, well, actually, the girl that lives with my uh, son, yeah. sure. she, you know, her part of the money, because my dad left money for all of us. Okay. For all three of us. Okay. And, uh, you know, my son gets part of that money also. Okay. But he doesn't, he doesn't get it until he's 25. All right. But the whole thing is, um, what was I going to say? So you can yeah. get some of she it now, though. Pay, she had to pay an inheritance tax. Ugh. All right. And that's not going to, we're not going to get the rest of the money until the beginning of June. And how much money is that? I don't know. I, I don't know yet. About ballpark. Is it a million? No, it ain't a million. Is it a hundred thousand? No, it's not. No, no. Is no, it no. twenty thousand? It's um, a little over ten thousand. Throughout this video, we will see Di throw out varying figures for the size of the inheritance she received from her father. Di's mental deficiencies and compulsive lying also add to the confusion, but it's important to remember that at this point she had already received at least part of the inheritance, which she claims she was living off of. When the boy suggested Di take the $10,000 that was coming her way and put it towards rent on a living space for her and her son, she was as dismissive as you would expect a woman who abandoned her son to be. Why don't you use it for uh, first and last month's rent on a place that you and your son can live in, so that way you could actually, you know, yeah. have some kind of a relationship with your son that you've missed out on for a decade? That's right. Comment? You know, I I talk to him all the time. No, no, you're not answering no. the question. That's a fair question. Uh, uh, all right, all right, I got you. But but it, it depends on him. You know, why aren't you? If he wants to uh, come and stay with Lady Di, why aren't you getting your own place where you and your son can live together and he can stop being repeatedly molested by this other oh, woman? Think of what she's doing to your young oh, son. Oh, awful. Oh, my God. After ruminating on the purposeless nature of Di's existence, the conversation turned to her job at Budweiser which I will remind you, she had lost over a decade ago by this point. You lost everything. You had a, well, you had a good job I, at Budweiser. I, you had a place oh, to wait, live. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. That, now, that job at Bud, okay, I had that job 17 years. Yeah. All right, I had that job a long time. Yeah. All right, but the, but the whole thing is, with, with those people over there, I mean, I love working there. I miss all my friends. I miss everything about How'd it. How'd you lose the job? You know what? I have, I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Where? What? I was on the phone where I shouldn't have been on the phone. Uh, you know, and I was going through a divorce back then. So you were yapping on company time? No, I wasn't yapping on company time. I was on the phone. Lady Di, how did they fire you for just making a phone call? Because. Oh. oh. I, I, I don't want to say anything about any... Anybody over there? Well, just go ahead. We don't know their names. What? My, God's sake. My union sided with the foreman. Why? That's all I'm going to say. I, I have no idea. You're obviously a terrible employee, a lackluster yeah. employee. No, 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 no. I was a good employee. If you were, were sided with you. If you were good, they would have kept you. If you don't believe that Lady Di was a compulsive liar, this was at least the third different explanation she gave for her firing from Budweiser. During the Homeless Cribs video, she said that she hurt her back, and the company fired her because they feared a lawsuit. Then during the intervention Opie and Anthony held for her in 2006, Di stated that she was let go as part of a series of layoffs at the company. And in this clip, she made up some bullshit story about being fired because she was on the phone with her lawyer, which we know is a lie because when she called into the show drunk in January of 2002, the divorce had already been finalized. <laughs> okay. Why are you, you crying? Go. Is somebody in the yeah, what's the matter? Mirror, you know? How's that? How's that divorce working out Tom for you? Tom Hex, son. Hey, how's yeah. that divorce working out for you, Lady Di? Divorce is done. It's yeah, I know. Done? So how is it being divorced now and uh, having no prospects? Oh no, man, this there is was like... nothing. There was nothing happening with my divorce right now. This is like a scene from Days of Wine and Roses. There was a <laughs> shut up. Oh, what made you? God. What made you open up that bottle today? What made me open up that bottle today was. The divorce is final. That's it. Now, I know I sound like I'm analyzing 20-year-old radio shows the way Russ Cole would investigate a Louisiana pedophile cult, but in my opinion, what makes the Lady Die story so interesting is how difficult it is to pin down any concrete details. Her story changes every time she tells it, and it's only after listening to these videos multiple times over the years that I've noticed enough contradictions to put together something resembling a timeline. But I digest. 
Di's perpetual dishonesty eventually gave way to a discussion of her living arrangements with the enigmatic figure known as Bill, who was quickly put on the line with Opie and Anthony. And, and how long have you known her? We've known her. We feel like that she's slipped a little bit um, over the last few years. And how long have you known her? I mean, because um, she wasn't always like in this kind of trouble, you know. I was a woman. Six years. She's been with me six years. Now, she's, she's kind of like your girlfriend, right? We understand that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah it's like... nothing wrong with that. I mean, we, we you know, you got to stick it somewhere. I mean, why not? <laughs> no, not that way. <laughs> no, no, no. I know what you're saying, but I mean, there was always the rumor that she was a three holer. We didn't know if that was true or not. Yeah, she's doing all right. Why? Now, does she's she? Doing do, good. Let me ask you, Bill. We're a little concerned about her drinking, not just your seeds, but do, does she drink more than she should? Oh, I do. <laughs> you can answer that question yourself. See, that's what we're concerned with. Like, you know, we again, we don't mind the fact that, okay, she's going to lounge around and watch the monkeys and, and take unprotected, you know, load after load from you. But is she is she going to do anything to better herself? <laughs> well, you have to ask her that. It's bad. You, know, you, you seem like you a good ask. guy. I mean, you seem like a good dude, like you care about her. And I mean, well, I mean yeah, she's obviously, well, I'm not just a, you know, a, a, a jizz rag to you, which uh, now... From Bill, we learned that he had known Di for six years, which roughly tracks with Di's assessment of their relationship. Bill was retired and living off a pension. Additionally, he said he and Di slept in the same bed, which only furthered Jim Norton's opinions that their relationship was sexual. Bill denied this, but when Lady Di got back on the line, she half-heartedly confirmed that her relationship with Bill was at times sexual in nature. He said, he said, we asked him, like, like a lot of times, will she relieve your tension with her hand? And he said, yeah, of course. Well, then just leave it at that, then. No, but then, then, but then I said, well, how about the mouth? And he said, obviously. I don't talk about my sex life. We're, we're friends. Who cares? Yeah, I have sex. You yeah, have sex. We're friends. Come but on. I don't, but I don't go around talking about my sex life. How often do you use your mouth to relieve his tension? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. God. How you often? wait until I get up there. No, we'll ask oh, you in person, boy. but is it more than once a week? That's all. It's, I, don't, I don't think I should answer that. Just answer it. It's, a, it's an open question. Oh, boy, oh, boy. How often? I mean, it's obviously not all the time. You're both, you know. Once a week, okay? You satisfied now? No, well, yeah, but I got to know where he finishes. Di called the show again on June 18th and the boys managed to squeeze a little more information about the inheritance out of her, including the fact that her mother had left her money as well. So what has that changed in eight happened. years? Um, well, we have a place to stay, me and my roommate. He's your boyfriend. He's your fucking, yeah, you, you blow uh, him. No, you boyfriend. blow him so you don't have to pay rent. <laughs> exactly. Come on, no, let's... No, 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 I help out with the bills around here the best I can. But you, how? You don't have a job. His name is wait, Bill, wait, wait, wait. Means... But don't let her off the hook. Uh -huh. How do you help out with the bills? Well, whenever I can. But you, you like Ann said, you don't have a job, so where's <laughs> vague? Like where's this Opie. money coming from to pay the bills? Opie, my dad left me money, okay? Son of a bitch. Yeah, she's been living off her dead her dad. Her dead dad's money. No, 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 no. That's no, no, no. The, my, both my parents left me money. How much? Oh, th that's none of anybody's business. Uh, how much? How, how much? much? Ballpark. I mean, it was a millions, if that's what you're asking. No, we don't Ballpark. think it's millions. <laughs> was it more than thirty dollars? <laughs> yes, more than thirty. Much how? more than thirty dollars. Oh, all right, all right. Was it ten thousand? Something like that, somewhere around there, thirteen thousand. Okay, if you thirteen thousand so, dollars. So, so you went through that already? No, yeah, she did. No, no, no. Well, she doesn't pay rent. She doesn't. She she, 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 so she blows the guy for rent. She sucks okay. his cock for rent. So and we know she, she spends sucks, money on booze. She sucks yeah. dick to get her rent paid. Okay. Right. Imagine how proud her dead dad would be. Oh God, right? He left me eighteen thousand, and then another thirteen, fourteen thousand on top of that. What? So, so how much do you need? You thirty thousand? Just say that. Something like that, yeah. Don't just keep giving Something us... Something like that. <laughs> Don't give us figures and make us right. do the math. Just tell us. This figure was significantly higher than Di's previous statement that she, her son, and the woman he was living with were receiving a little over $10,000 from her father's estate. It's also worth bearing in mind that this means Di had already blown through $18,000 in the nine-month period since her father's death in September of 2012. And this is in spite of the fact that she didn't have to pay rent to Bill. That being said, most of the phone call was spent questioning Di about her work history. We learned that in the last nine years, Di had worked at Dunkin' Donuts for eight months, 
worked for a temp agency for an undetermined period of time, and worked as a crossing guard for a few weeks. Dai wouldn't stop calling in sick and was fired, though. She's lying. All right, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm not. Well, you're not what? All right, I, had, I, I used to call in sick. I called in sick too much, and they got tired of it, and they let me go. But why is Bill saying don't say it? Yeah. Well, that, that, that's what he did not want me to say. Why? Why? Because I called in sick too many times. I had too much free time in between. And why why were you calling he... in sick for I, an she easy was getting job? Drunk. I guarantee huh? you she was getting drunk after the morning shift. She was getting drunk. And couldn't... No, 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 no. I just called in sick because sometimes it was winter time and everything like that, and I just didn't feel like going out there and stuff like that, and they just got sick of it. So basically you, you were a lazy lump yeah. that couldn't go out uh, twice a day. You just wanted to sit in the house on your big fat ass and do nothing. I don't have a big fat ass. This call was so reminiscent of her old appearances that Opie actually had Erock dig up a phone call from 2004 for comparison. I begged Erock to find a clip of Lady Die. He uh -huh. found one from 2004? The beginning of November 2004. We were on the for a month. It's a quick clip, right? This clip is nine, seconds, almost yeah. nine years nine old. Nine years old. All right, this is going to make my point. Go ahead. Still out there looking for a job. Yeah, sure you are. You yeah, pound in well, the now. pound in the pavement. Well, at least yeah. you sound kind of yeah. sober today. She does that whenever I am she walks. Sober today. What, what what are you trying? What job are you looking for? A tequila worm eater? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. Jobs in town. I'm trying. I'm trying to look like all over the place. Clothing stores, all that other. Stuff. That must be where you are now, right? Looking for work. Yeah. So where are you? <laughs> Same conversation. Well, I'm at home right now. Oh, you're at home right now. That's where all the jobs are. Okay, that's from wow. nine. That's from wow. nine years ago. Wow, Dude, that's two thousand four. Yeah, and, and we're having the same conversation nine years later. The conversation with Lady Di must have brought up some nostalgic feelings, because after seven years away from the show, Di and Marion made their return to the studio as part of the Super Show alongside several other show characters, like Daniel Bobo Curlin, Stalker Patty, and Ira the Weatherman. As soon as Di and Marion entered the studio. It was obvious that Di's health had declined considerably over the intervening years. Her face was noticeably reddish and swollen, while her gut looked grotesquely distended, especially in relation to the withered and frail appearance of her arms. Di and Marion are grating on their own, but the addition of the other Mensa members in the dynamic makes these so-called super shows almost unlistenable at times, but there were a few interesting moments from this appearance the most infamous being the moment when Di got so excited about being back in studio that she came in her pants. How often would you say we're on the cruise? Every uh -oh. night on the cruise? Every, every night. You okay? Every night. Yes. But you know what? We get a balcony. Hold on. Where are you going? Uh -oh. What's the matter? We, we get, we get a you balcony. Do? You all right? Yeah. You all right? You sure, Diane? Yeah. Let's see, Bob. What's wrong? No. Wait a minute. You all right? Come here. Come here. No, no. You just do it right here. Where are you going? <laughs> What's the matter? You okay? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm fine. Listen. What? Wait. Just talk in the corner. I think I got my friend. Go ahead. Yeah. Did you hear that? I did. I think I got my friend. She, she just got her period? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's probably, it's probably a fucking hemorrhage. Life goes on. Uh, <laughs> Lady Di, what made you think? Lady Di, Lady Di. I don't even get yours no more. Lady Di, listen to me. What? what made you think at 51, after you hadn't gotten your period in a while, that all of a sudden, out of the fucking blue, you got real you'd get your period? Tell all being Anthony, you were real nervous. That's all. It was only a discharge, and that's normal. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Believe me, I don't have anything. It but was wait, just what do you mean a discharge? Like... It did happen just part of being a person. What yeah. happened? What, what exactly was it? What happened? It was just a discharge. I thought, uh, a I discharge. Thought, I thought it was getting you again. A discharge of what? Was it blood? I don't know. No, no, no. no Tell blood. me what. I'm a guy. I don't know. Discharge. Who What's cares? a discharge? It's the body. I have my own body. What issues. is it? Clear discharge, if you want to know. All right, anyway. Are you a squirter? Change the subject. Are you getting excited? Get off for that, While you were talking on the air, you had a clear discharge? Well, yeah, when I was talking to oh. you guys, I, I, all of a sudden I felt something. I said, let me go to the bathroom. While Di was trying to remedy the situation by asking random women in this Sirius XM building for feminine hygiene products, Marion divulged her true fears about Di's health. Keep it off the radio. Go ahead. Okay, keep it off the radio. Then what? I'd like to keep something off okay, the radio. Okay, got it. Right, what? I've been trying to get Diane help for a long time. Uh-huh. Right? Because I don't want to see her. And I please, I want this off the radio. No, it's fine, please. fine. 
Promise me you will keep this all three of because it's got to do with my family. Uh, oh, oh, my goodness. God, my dad died a year and a half ago. Oh, Jesus, sorry, God bless. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Anthony, seriously. I'm and, sorry I no, hear I, that. I don't want this on All right, radio. if you take the headphones oh, no. off, it's not on the radio. Uh, seriously, I'm going to tell you something. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. It turned out to be cirrhosis, and he had it for years. Oh, no. And I worry about that she's going to get like that. Cirrhosis. And I see her. Cirrhosis no, of liver. I see her and I see. Sirloin of beef. No, Anthony, seriously, I see her and I see two people from Bugs Bunny. that died in my family from that. <clears throat> Cirrhosis? Yes. This appearance did have other notable moments, such as Marion twerking for DJ Who Kid and saying the N word. <laughs> but we have a lot to cover in this video, so we're going to focus on the essential details from now on. Dai would not make another appearance on the show for four months, and perhaps this was for good reason. In part one, I talked about Dai's obsession with the show, and how it would often lead her to wait on hold for hours just to be abused by Opie and Anthony. Well, it seems she had fallen back into that habit, as in late October, she waited on hold for three hours, just to deliver this critical piece of information to Jim Norton. Uh, hi, who's this? You know who it is. Uh. <laughs> How you doing? It's me, it's Dai. Hello, yeah. man, Dai. We're, we're yeah. talking to Aziz. You got anything? Uh, yeah, no, I just want to let you know. Uh, tell Jim Norton this. We're going to be at the show on Friday. <laughs> oh, I'm at the Beacon Theater with Andrew Dice Clay on Friday. And... Whoa, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I'm happy about that. Very that's cool. a, a great gig. It's going to be an amazing gig. Awesome venue. Yeah, it's going to be very good. Delighted that you'll be there. <laughs> yeah. gonna, she's just <laughs> yapping over. Why would you call our radio show to tell us that you're going to be at a Jim Norton show? She's one of our regular diseases. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I just figured I'd call up and let you know. Oh, um, why would we care if you were going? Yeah, for what purpose? That's what he asked you. Did you see what just happened? <laughs> Thank you. Obi goes, why would you call up and ask Jim Norton uh, or tell Jim Norton you're going to be at the show? And she goes, no, no. I just wanted to call up and tell him I was going to be there. And let him know. But that's, he asked you why you would but do what, that. What, what could he possibly be doing? The rest of this call is basically your bog-standard Lady Di phoner, where she makes up lies and excuses about not finding a job. However, the addition of Aziz Ansari does change the dynamic a bit, because we get to witness someone with no knowledge of Lady Di react to her bizarre circumstances. And this phone call does contain what might be my all-time favorite Lady Di moment. Amazing. Maybe she's figured everything out. Yeah, and, and we're we the haven't. idiots. We're the dummies yep. waking up early yep. on radio, no, 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 no. doing a bunch no, of stand up. No, no. Who cares? Take dummies. 10 years <laughs> off. <laughs> and then she's got to answer it. No, no, no. You guys aren't dummies. I mean, why don't more people Thanks. do that? Where it's like, I'm just going to chill for yeah. 10 years. Not going to do anything. <laughs> not going to work. No, no. Just going to do what I want to do. That seems like a good deal. I'm going right? to chill for 10 I years. Understand. Diane, do you understand? Like, I'm not sure if you understand the dynamics of a conversation. But like Aziz is talking or Ope's talking to somebody, like w the, the sounds coming out of their mouth mean they should be entering your ears. Yeah, but you're yeah. Just, you're just yapping over everybody. You're very difficult to have a conversation with. Who are you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, did you? I don't know who he is. I'm Jim Norton. <laughs> All right, Jim Norton. Okay. Okay. You know, the guy that you're going to see Friday and the reason why you called us to tell us that you're going to see him. Do you have dementia? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't have dementia. When Lady Di called the after show in early November, Sam Roberts stated that she had been on hold for two and a half hours. It was also revealed that when Di and Marion attended Jim's stand-up show, she drank and talked through the entire set and handed other people in the audience her garbage. But the only significant event that took place over the following two months occurred when Anthony tricked Lady Di into tweeting out her phone number. What do you want to tweet you now? All right. Now, do you have it up? Are you ready to tweet me? Uh, yeah, but it says Diana. It says my name. And then it says a Anthony Cumia. Is that, that right? That's perfect. Yeah. Have you, uh, do a direct message. Okay. Now, now, send me your phone number, but make sure you put two uh, periods after the phone number. Uh, nope. And then it's called a private tweet. Uh, all right. All right, ready? Uh, send me that, and I'll let you know if I got it right now. Oh, did you send it? <laughs> yes, she did. Maybe I sent it to myself. There it is. <laughs> got it? All right, I, thank you very much. All right, there it is. I got it, Di. I got it. Why did you do that?
<laughs> Thank you, Di. I'll be in touch now about uh, the road trip. Uh, del delete your tweet, Di. Delete your tweet. Oh, God. Why? Oh, uh, Jim, oh, yeah, talk her into deleting a tweet. That'll take fucking... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I hear the beeping. The call. Can I take it off speakerphone right now? Uh, no, leave speakerphone on. Yeah. <laughs> What's that sound? Oh, that's people calling me right now, Anthony. Why is that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that beeping sound is. That's that's people calling me. Oh, oh. This is great. This is. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Did you put three periods after the end of the number? No periods. No, it's three. three he said it the whole time. Die. By December of 2013, Die was back in the studio, taking part in the Christmas Super Show alongside Bobo, Stalker Patty, and Mike Bachetti. When she arrived, Lady Die asked them to go easy on her because she had injured her knee. Unsurprisingly, this was because she drank too much beer and fell down. The only other really interesting tidbit that came out of the Christmas Super Show was the possibility that Lady Di had bed bugs. <laughs> yeah, a little fly. Anything that would give you a scar well, like that would be a mosquito. Today. A bed, bed bug. Oh, right. oh, right. Please. The mosquitoes. Then it was a mosquito. Not in the winter, it's not. It's a bed bug. You got fucking bed bugs. Look at her arms. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Arms? Wait a minute. Lady Di, let, right let me bugs. see the back of your arm. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of bites. You're bitten up uh, pretty, pretty Those good. Those are bed bugs. Mm. Bite. Yeah, yeah, bed bugs. I'll no. check when I come home, okay? When I go home, I'll check. When I come home. It's a mild case of a skin rash. That's all it is. The Super Shows are very entertaining and contain some of the funniest moments from the waning years of the Opie and Anthony show. However, when Lady Di was in the studio, she didn't typically reveal too much about her life. I think I understand why. When she was in the studio, she was getting the attention she craved, so there was no need to work for it. If she said something funny or embarrassing, it was purely a function of her own stupidity. Early 2014 brought two more phone calls from Lady Di. On January 21st, she called in, having already drunk two beers by 8 a.m., and the effect of the booze on her powers of perception was evident. <laughs> you guys want to play today? Uh -oh. I do. All right. All right. Keep track of uh, the bell every time she yeah. answers a question with a question. You're not letting me finish. And then let's go with the ridiculous. Oh, we are yeah, not absolutely. letting her finish. We're, going We're not letting you finish. You, you've been talking for six and a half hours already. Oh, Jesus. All right. Six and a half hours. What are you talking about? <laughs> that's, that's two bells. <laughs> yeah. It's a question with a question, and it's literal. Okay, right. Paul. Look, you only need, you need the beer. Shut up, you. Who's that uh -oh. guy? Yeah. Well, that's my roommate. Talking. The lover's spat? Now, Wait, can we talk to him for a second? Can we talk to him for a second? No, Can no, we no, talk no. to him for a second? What's your roommate like Can a robot? Can we talk to him for a second? Yeah. yeah, what is your roommate a robot? No, he's not a robot. Okay. <laughs> now, yeah, but how come you. Well, who are you living with? Matthew McConaughey? He's not Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> My, uh, McConaughey? <laughs> so why is he saying you need a beer or something? What do you have him hanging upside down like a bat? No. Okay, good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> After answering several jokes literally, Di put her roommate Bill on the phone, at which point Bill told the story of how he became acquainted with Lady Di. There's a bar. Mm, figures. It's got a laundromat right behind it. It used to be a pizza parlor. But they turned it into um, a laundromat. Me and my buddy were down in Jeff were washing clothes. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. And we're, we're drinking. We're not drunk or nothing. We're just having a couple of beers. Sure. Work <clears throat> and <throat> met her. Would she come up to yeah. you guys at the bar? No, I went up to her. What's the first thing I said? I said, you um, no, no, um, something like that. I don't know. So anyway. Now, what did you say to her when you walked up? Did you put a quarter in and try to ride her? See how long you can hold on? <laughs> say what? I bar fly. Well, what did you say when you walked up to her? No, I just walked up there, and I said, I was, we were drinking beer, and I said, hey, I should, no, I washed the clothes. He held the sugar cube out in a flat it. hand? <laughs> no, no, no. I gave her, here, here's ten bucks to fold my clothes. Ten bucks to fold your clothes? Yeah. That's a bargain. That's a hell of a story. Yeah, whatever. Did she take it? Oh, hell, shit, Thank yeah. hell yeah. Aside from their first encounter resembling the protection agreement between a member of the Aryan Brotherhood and his prison bitch, 
Bill was adamant that there wasn't a sexual component to his relationship with Lady Di. The two Jersey drunkards rambled on for about 20 minutes, but it didn't really add anything to the show, and so the end of the call with Lady Di. Di hadn't received enough attention, though, and called back into the program. However, Di had nothing to offer, and they hung up on her again. This didn't stop her from calling in a third time that day. Hi, who's this? Hello? Lady Di again. Oh my god, with this lady. <laughs> Oh my god. Is this the is this the eleven hundredth time you've called this morning? No, actually it's the first time. Uh, actually oh. it's the second time. Actually it's um, the third, it's, it's, it's the third, third or fourth time. time. Bill wants to talk to you for a minute. Okay? Yeah, I, I know. No, we're... we got a radio show to do. Yeah, what do I you know. think? What do you think this is? What are you calling from the roof? Yeah, you call from the yeah. roof? No, he's not calling from the roof, he's calling from the kitchen. Oh All right. uh, hold on a second. No, no hold on. Oh. Wait, why did she think... No. After another meandering conversation with Bill, Di got back on the phone, where she slurred her speech and admitted to being five beers deep at 10.30 in the morning. Before we go any further, I think it's important to put something into perspective. In the comments of the last video, there were a fair amount of people saying how awful Opie and Anthony were for making fun of this mentally ill woman. It seems like they don't want to acknowledge how manipulative Lady Di was. I showed you the clip where she was panhandling and said that you make more money hitting people on the way out of the store than the way in. I make more when you hit them on the way out than you do on the way in. And we even saw the way she used the notoriety of the Opie and Anthony show to convince someone to give her change. They're trying to get some. They need something to drink. They're from Opie and Anthony. Oh, you know Opie and Anthony are? I heard you guys on the radio. Yeah, this, she's Lady Di. She's the one. Lady Di, go get whatever you need. Thank you, baby doll. How's it going? <laughs> you too, much. And here she is, living in Bill's apartment, pissing through her inheritance, getting wasted in the morning rather than looking for a job, and seeking attention by calling in multiple times to a radio show that doesn't even want to speak to her. This was what I was talking about earlier when I said that the super shows don't typically provide the juiciest details about Di. It was when she was at home drinking in the morning and waiting on hold for hours that the desperation must have set in. So she would confess more details about her life to keep the attention of Opie and Anthony, as was the case when they talked to Lady Di on January 30th, and she admitted that she did in fact have bedbugs, as Jim Norton suspected. In a truly astounding display of stupidity, Di said that she and Bill had already purchased new beds and couches to replace the old bedbug-ridden furniture before they had an exterminator come by thus likely infesting their new furniture. And according to Di, this was at least the third time she and Bill were forced to replace their furniture because of a bedbug infestation. In spite of the bedbugs, Di was allowed back in the studio in early February for the Super Show 2. As with the first Super Show, we didn't really learn anything new about Di from this appearance. However, there was one fairly memorable moment where Lady Di was talking to Dave Chappelle, 50 years old. Her birthday's coming up. All right, that's cool. So I would like for you to go meet her and tell her happy birthday. Oh, okay, no problem. Well, we'll do that probably at, when the show starts again because everybody's yeah. on birthday. What was, uh, who was the other stars of Half Baked besides Jim Brewer? Bob, besides Jim Brewer? Yeah, the one that the one that slept on the couch a lot. <laughs> yeah. Lady Dice talking to Dave Chappelle in the other room. Yeah. Is that real Dave Chappelle? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Bon Jovi. Oh, dummy. I forgot he died. You know, I, I, I should be part of the Super Show. Nice. I think, I think nice. he Work with Apparently, I think Sam has informed me that she He's just was showing her tits. <laughs> Dave Chappelle, really? Sam walked in, and, I think right? I, I used and she to was it when showing I was like her. You know, uh, what do you call it? Tone. Drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm high, not right now. So yeah. I can't remember anything. Like I could barely gone. remember my name half the time. Oh, my goodness, man. That was such a I funny movie. I smoked a lot of weed. That was a funny movie. I bought the movie because it was really good. Her <laughs> boobs. She was showing her boobs. Sam, what's going on? I see tears uh, in your eyes. I because I mean, I, I we left her in there with Dave lately. Chappelle, and they were just talking. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. And then I went back in to get oh, boy, <laughs> Lady Di to come back in the studio. He was doing some kind of show She had her shirt off and was showing off her her <laughs> tits gotta look like two big tumors. They're terrible. By now, the novelty of having Lady Di back on the show had worn off. Ten months had gone by since she first called into the after show, and her appearances were becoming as repetitive as they were a decade ago. Di would call in, they would ask her how many beers she had already consumed, Di would talk about applying for a job at Family Dollar for the eighth time, and then she'd put Bill on the phone for a while. 
It seemed like Obi and Anthony didn't know what to do with her. But luckily, Colin Quinn did. I've got a big star on the line. A big star. Colin Quinn. Hi, guys. Oh, oh, hi, Colin. Hey, Carl. Oh, what are we doing wrong today, Colin? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I liked does Colin. Uh... Does that make this our overriding narrative every time? Yeah, every time. <laughs> yeah, maybe <clears throat> Colin's just calling in as a fan of the show to contribute. What oh. do you got on the plane crash, Carl? <laughs> Nothing on the plane crash, guys. I'm calling in to contribute. Uh, it is something you're doing slightly wrong. Instead of just criticizing Diana, I'm putting out maybe you guys hire her to get her pad up her resume as like a cute intern for a few months, like a madman type situation. This lady Di should be an intern on our show. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. Oh. No, it's a terrible idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. We, she could be a, a paid intern. A paid intern for, uh, for the spring. I like this idea. Later that day, the boys called Di to discuss the internship, and after several minutes of hemming and hawing, it was agreed upon that Di would become an intern for the show for $10 an hour, or $250 at the end of the week. But as Opie predicted, Di's attitude towards the internship seemed completely defeatist, and she looked for ways to shoot down the idea even after agreeing to it. Now, can I ask you one question? What? Of course. Okay. What kidding. if I do finally get the job that I want? Then I won't be able to come in. <laughs> you <laughs> haven't <laughs> worked in ten fucking ten, years. Exactly. What job 15. do you really want? Co-starring in Charlotte's Web. What, <laughs> what do you think? All of a sudden, <laughs> next a week, out of nowhere, you're going to get a job. The job offers are going to start pouring in. I exactly. Worked in five years, not ten years. Oh, oh sorry. Boy. Sorry, it's been five and not ten. Uh, Reg all right. So Regardless, so you're not going to yeah, instantly exactly. get this job next week. Exactly, or ever. At the time, I don't think many people believed Lady Di would even show up for the internship, let alone complete the full week. This was a woman who was homeless because she decided one day to just stop going to work. She let her father raise her son instead of getting a job. But to everyone's surprise, on the 17th of March, 2014, Lady Di showed up for the internship and produced what might be the greatest week of radio in broadcasting history. Before we can get into Lady Di's internship, I implore you to go listen to them as soon as possible. I can only cover the bare minimum of the highlights in this video, and there are so many little things that will be left out. If you've never really listened to O and A, these are must-listen clips. It's about 14 hours in total, but it's worth it. Nevertheless, I will do my best to cover the more memorable moments. Lady Dine's presence was felt even before the show started, as she was interrupting Sam Roberts during the pre-show. Di looked pregnant, reeked of cigarettes, which she blamed on her coat, and had woken up at two in the morning to drink two natty ices. After a pointless conversation with Opie about the temperature of his water, Di went to work screening calls. And this is where the fun began. All right, the phones are lit, so now we, we should get baby calls, yeah, yeah. finally. Well, this guy, I should put him on hold, right? No, just say what, what does he want to say? I don't even... Uh, what'd you say? <laughs> Am I going to eat my baby? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not pregnant. I'm going to eat my baby. <laughs> I'm going to eat my baby. Oh, and hey, what's your name? <laughs> my baby is not going to come out of my butt. Don't worry about that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Fucking Tony, yeah. <laughs> Got it all wrong. <laughs> Charlie. Hi, Charlie. How you doing? Hey, I just want to congratulate you on your baby. That's great. Is the father a water buffalo or an elephant? The father is a water buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, what's your name? I'm Buffler. Oh, and hey, what's your name? Hello? Buffler. Hi. As the day progressed, it became clear that two beers at 2 a.m. was not enough booze to hold Lady Di over for the entire day. She was sweating, shaking, coughing, and breathing heavily, all of which she can be heard doing in the background during an interview with Pedro Pascal. This was, of course, when she wasn't interrupting the interview by asking Pedro Pascal idiotic questions, and at one point, touching his hat for some reason. One final question. Pedro really has to go. He's got yeah. a lot of press today, Lady Di. The final question is to you. All right, you said. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, testimony. The, uh, 
What's the name of the show again? <laughs> oh, my God. What's, what's, no, really. What's the name of the show? Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones is on Sunday night at 9 o'clock. Right. Yeah. And okay. not this Sunday, April 6th. <laughs> right. April 6th. Got a couple okay. weeks. That's a good question. Is okay. that your question? Yeah. Oh, that, was, <laughs> that wasn't what, a, what? Like How can I speak of the dead that way? Mm -hmm. It's terrible. What are you, what do are you doing? Why are you touching his hat? He took my hat. I, oh, yeah, I know. I know what it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lady died. I was wondering about that. What? You don't just, Why did you just take his you hat? Touch someone's it's, hat. It's the <laughs> guest's hat. What were you doing? Do you want to try it on? Just looking at no, you don't, don't touch it. Don't touch okay, it. No. Trust me. You might want to throw. They that. don't want you to touch anything. You might want to throw that hat away after no. uh, the interview. Oh my goodness gracious! After the Pedro Pascal interview was over. The boys took a call from Dr. Steve to discuss the state of Lady Di's health. Dr. Steve is an actual doctor and host of the Weird Medicine podcast, as well as a longtime friend of the show who would regularly call in when medical topics came up. He even appeared in studio multiple times. Since Dr. Steve could not be in studio on this occasion, he directed Opie and Anthony to administer several tests that would determine the severity of Di's withdrawals. <laughs> now stand what up. Now? Okay. Now stand up. Okay. Right. Now, now put your arms out to your sides again. Right arm all the way out to the side. Right arm all the way out to the side. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Yes, exactly. Now close yes. your eyes. Bring her arm around in front of her and touch her finger to her nose. Now touch, touch your, your finger to, to your nose. Yeah, yeah. If she all does this. it easily, then that's a test that her cerebellum is Back. working. Okay. Yeah, please, all right. right. There was no Straight problem. There was no problem. No, no, no problem. problem. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, her All cerebellum right. is working. The problem fine, is yeah. her gut. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. The liver. Once I sit down, I'm not getting up for a while. <laughs> oh, the liver. Yeah. She she just said uh, you know she's not getting up for a while if she sits down. Surprisingly, Di's symptoms weren't that bad, and it had even been mentioned several times over the course of the show that Di was actually a productive intern. It almost seemed like Di's internship was going to be a success, and depending upon your definition. It was. The second day of Di's internship didn't take off as well as the first. For one thing, she was late because she got the runs, so she missed her cab and had to take the train. When she was at the train station, Di had another bout of diarrhea, and while emptying her bowels, accidentally left her cigarette-scented coat by the automatic sink, which got it and later her shirt wet. We also learned that after the show on Monday, Di went to TGI Fridays with Bobo where she had four or five beers and nothing to eat. She hadn't eaten anything on Tuesday morning either, so the logical solution was to buy her a coffee culotta from Starbucks. This day of Daya's internship is infamous for the unbearably bad interview with Bell Knox, where the worm and the ghoul couldn't control their boners long enough to be funny. Luckily, the water buffaler was there to bring humor to the interview. I don't know, like all kinds of guys, you know what I mean. How old were you when you lost your virginity? You know what I, mean. I was 16. Okay. Aww. I was 16. Oh, yeah. no How old was the guy? Oh, the guy, uh, oh, da, 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 da. he was in his 20s. What kind of car? Uh, huh? Where was illegal. it? What, what was that? Where was it you had the sex? Where was it that I had? All right, you really want to know? Yes. yes. In, a, in an abandoned building on a door. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm very serious. <laughs> Did you get like this a great. Like your husband? Right? Yeah. Hold on, that's the greatest answer. <laughs> in an abandoned building on a door? Oh, on a door. Yeah, on a door. <laughs> what are you, a fucking spider? How did you get on a door? Oh, I think it was off the hinges oh, on the ground. Oh, no, it's like she just like, Yeah, she just like went against the door. And just fell back. That would be cool too. You the door could get was on the floor. And against he laid the you door. on the door in an abandoned building. That sounds like a good, good idea for a point out. What a romantic. Yeah. How was it? 16 years old. Do guys misinterpret you being really... He was around maybe 10 years older than me. Right. Okay. okay. Wow, 26. I, maybe 24. He was he a was. creep guy. He was <laughs> a creep. I, said, I, know, I still know All him. signs yeah, he still, he lead creep. toward yeah. creep. He was 26. He takes a teenager into an abandoned <laughs> building and fucks her on a door. He's a creep. Uh, yeah. He's yeah. a creep. I, I and Lady Di had some way. looks back in the day. Even after the Bell Knox interview was over, Lady Di was not finished discussing intimate details about her sex life. What? I have something I have to tell okay, you. Okay, what's right. what? Okay, back in the 80s, yeah. Yeah. a long time ago, uh -huh. every weekend, uh -huh. yeah. my boyfriend gave it to me in the ass in a car. <laughs> 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 and I did not like that, but... but I'm sure he said that too. <laughs> right. 
I forgot to we mention that. We weren't talking about what Eddie. What the fuck? I <laughs> forgot to every mention weekend. it. Wait, hold on. Every weekend. Every week. He'd fuck you in the ass in your car. Yeah. His car? Yeah, his what, car. What I, mean, I didn't car? have a car back in the 80s. What kind of car? I, mean, I, had, I, had, I had a car, but I, I didn't use it. I was every not for I was fucking in the ass. Yeah. Every weekend you had to deal Just with that? every weekend. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> every weekend you knew. I've listened to this clip probably dozens of times in the last six years and I still don't know what to make of it. In part three, we're going to delve into Dai's psyche, and we'll talk about this story more, but for now, we're just going to let soak in, much like the bodily fluids that had soaked into Dai's underwear. As you can imagine, a coffee culotta and no food is not a good remedy for the DTs. Now, I'm not sure how much detail I can get into without the video being demonetized or just making you guys sick, so if you want to listen to the story in all of its nauseating glory, just listen to the original internship audio. The long story short is that the boys decided to buy Dai's underwear for 140 bucks. The underwear, which were by that point various shades of brown and various degrees of wet, were then smelled by Erock, Sam, and a few others. Gonna piss yourself. Let me, let me tell you something it's right now. Natural. Go right ahead. Let me tell. Sure. Let me tell you something right uh -huh. now. Absolutely. Okay. Tell us. Um, I used to uh -huh. uh, buy the diapers, <laughs> the adult diapers. <laughs> yeah. Because I was getting a lot of. Uh, you know, leakage down there. And then I just decided You're too to go young back to for the regular that. underwear, huh? You're too young for that. You gotta... Why? Yeah. Because, Why'd you go back to the regular it, underwear? Because it's too the expensive. adult diapers is too, are too expensive. She, so she's got... You know, $23. Just like if you bought, if, if you bought baby diapers. Do you, do you understand? Uh -huh. You never disappoint. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> no, we're being... He's so being lady serious. Die. Once the panty-sniffing shenanigans were over, a few listeners called in to give their take on Dai's failing health. The second caller gave a particularly grim appraisal of where Dai was heading, stating that she appeared to be suffering from the early stages of Korsakoff syndrome. She, besides all her physical defects, uh, she clearly has at least like early stage uh, Korsakoff syndrome, which is uh, basically alcohol-induced dementia. So she's not just killing herself, she's making herself crazy. Oh, it's called oh, nice. Korsakoff? Yeah, it's Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome, or just Korsakoff for short, not that short, obviously, but K O R S A K O F F, I think. Korsakoff. And what, that happens to alcoholics? They get that kind of cough you heard? Yeah, and in fact, you can tell she's doing a bunch of compensatory things, like uh, the way she repeats what you say, that's a problem. No, the, the, the name Korsakoff isn't the cough. That's the, the name of the, the dementia yeah, that no, she's getting. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so in, in a couple of years, I mean, she's not going to remember, like, there's videos online of people with very extreme versions of this where they're, they'll be interviewing and they'll, you know, one question in, forget where they are and shit. So I'll see you in a year, Diane. As bad as the second day of Di's internship seemed, it had actually been much, much worse behind the scenes. As Sam Roberts explained during the Opie and Anthony pre-show, other people in the building were becoming aware of Di. Opie backed this claim up and said that things were so bad that Sirius XM came close to pulling the plug on the entire internship. So she, uh, I guess she puked at least four times. Uh -huh. She had the runs yesterday, and we thought it was hilarious. Thank God we didn't try to tape her in the bathroom, <laughs> by the way. That was a good move. Yeah. Because yeah. she would not be here today. Uh, but I, I, I... I I heard that she was uh, puking in the sink, but she was puking in the sink the whole time. Yeah, and she uh, she said she doesn't like puking in the toilet. The no. problem is, it's a corporate bathroom for females, by the way, which right. is a little different than males. To share its space, men will deal with a little more in in, in a bathroom situation than uh, women. Wait, she was vomiting in the sink because she doesn't like that. I thought she had an accident. No, she doesn't like no. vomiting in toilets. They're made for number one and number two. She says right. so. The vomit was so bad in the sink yeah. that uh, the building got involved. And by the way, those sinks they have the drains are like Ugh. a little grate. They're not those. Um, they're not those plug drains, are they? <laughs> no, it stopped up the sink. It stops up the sink. <laughs> it makes sense that Sirius XM was about to shut down the bit when he realized the havoc that Di was wreaking, such as defecating with the stall doors open, taking her clothes off in the middle of the bathroom and clogging the sink with so much vomit that the building had to get involved. It also probably didn't help Dai's case that a notable television actress walked in on one of her escapades. Were they annoyed at her? There was 
a television personality using the bathroom. Ugly Betty. Yes. Ugly <laughs> Betty. Ugly yes. Betty so was what? here. How, how appropriate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she walks out of the bathroom and said, there's a crazy woman in there who's naked. <laughs> <laughs> Ugly Betty said that? Yes. Ugly Betty has to deal with our crap. With concern in her voice. Like, who's oh the naked crazy woman in the bathroom? Right. Dai's internship was only allowed to continue under the condition that she was quarantined to the Opie and Anthony studio and was not allowed into the serious XM bathrooms. Consequently, when Dai had to use the bathroom, she needed to be walked out of the building like an animal and taken to one of the bathrooms in the city. As the show wore on, we learned many new details about Dai. The first was that she only had $10 left of the 140 they had given her the previous day in exchange for her stained panties. She had spent some of the money on chicken fingers and $7 beers at TGI Fridays in Times Square. The rest was spent on a 30-pack of beer, as well as two 12-packs for Bill and cigarettes. The conversation then shifted to Bill for a while, and after some denying, Di admitted that she had called the cops on Bill a few times for holding her money. What? How many times? Well, Come on. Oh, be boy, honest, that means Di. yes. Be yeah. honest. That means yes. Sounds, sounds like the cops well, have been well, called. Well, we used to live in another place. I yeah. did call the cops on him a couple of times. Why? Oh, Why? Yeah. Because I was working, okay? Uh-huh. All right? And he would hold my money, and I didn't like that because I, I wanted my own oh, money. Man. Why would he hold your money? He would hide it on me. Like a Probably pimp. so you wouldn't spend it all. Yeah. It seems like he was that trying was... to do the right thing. Okay, but he was holding my money. No, I understand. Yeah, you, you I know get what it. I mean. Right. And I didn't. You but, know. But my point was, is, he, I, he wasn't. He, would, he, he wasn't holding your money because he wanted your money. He was holding your money because he knew you were, were spending it. Yep. Uh, too quickly. Irresponsibly. Or irresponsibly. Yeah. Well, right. you know, my parents were the same way. Yeah. They, they, would, they would hold. They would hold my money. So for your whole life, people have basically been telling you that you're irresponsible. Yeah. Basically. Considering that Di spent one hundred and thirty dollars on beer and cigarettes. I'm kind of on the side of Bill and Lady Di's parents. During this segment, Di also revealed that she had been to three rehabs and two detoxes. But even after completing a 30-day rehab, she went back to drinking after two days. After some more chatter about Di's bathroom habits, the boys wanted to call Marion about Di's condition. The usually talkative Marion initially hung up on Di twice, but they eventually managed to get her to stay on the phone long enough for Marion to start spilling some real truth. Diana, you don't want to go for 30 days. You you had a good freaking job. You had a better job than I do. Oh, shit. Yeah, well, years, I realized that already. I already know and that. It's a hell of a lot better than what I, what I have. And you and lost so, I mean, I might be working a lot of years what I have in mind. But let me tell you one thing. She had the best job anybody could freaking have. Oh, yeah? yeah. Was it reasonable? But she had to mess that up. And you know what they gave her? So many freaking chances. Years and years and years ago. And she refused to that, go to rehab. That was the uh, Budweiser job. Why did you refuse to go to rehab? No, I went to They put me in a rehab. But, Diana. Okay, but then I just went you, back to my old habits again. That's, exactly. that's what happens. Yeah. Because you, know, you, don't, you don't want to control yourself. Yeah, you okay? got to control yourself. This is at least the fourth different story about how Di lost her job at Budweiser. Honestly, I think Marion's explanation is the closest to the truth. But Marion wasn't done yet. Not even close. Is. I'm yeah. going to tell you guys something, for real. Yeah. When Diane got okay. that inheritance from her father, I see uh -huh. her father I see was, was a good, her mom were both good people. Uh -huh. They, I kept telling her, put it in the bank, save some for a day that you, when it runs. No, she had to go spend it within a friggin' nine, like nine months, eight months. Oh, she how much had did... to go through it like water. But how much did she get? I don't really know. Off the, I don't really know. About. 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 She got a lot. How, How much? much? Around, around $60,000. And you went through it in nine months? Mm, yeah. Anthony, Hold I on, guys! <laughs> There's yeah. so much going on yeah, here no, that we no, got to no. explain. No, 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 no. I also took care of Bill. But... You know, what you spend the sixty thousand on? Um, and Bill, and wait, shut the uh, fuck wait, up! Oh, wait, and uh, I also bought clothes. You know, <laughs> I bought food. I, I bought food into the house. I mean, it, it, it just wasn't only for beer. That's what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, Marion, what happened? But you know how hard it is to spend sixty thousand in nine months, Marion. So that brings the size of Nye's inheritance from a previously stated thirty-two thousand dollars up to sixty thousand, which Di blew through in nine months. When asked to explain what she had spent that much money on in such a short period of time, Di denied that she had spent it all on booze, but the only other expenses she could account for 
were food, clothes, and some vague stuff for Bill. Speaking of Bill, they once again asked Di about the nature of her relationship with him, and if it was sexual. Di initially denied that it was, but then changed her story after some more questioning. Did he go down on you? Did he? Ah. Uh, Did he? Uh, he used to, yeah. He, he used, used to. to. A lot, right? Times, no, yeah. no, no. What? A few yeah, times. Yeah. That used to be regular. Bill used to go down yeah. on you once in a while. Yeah. Oh, right. like so, Mickey, was regular, it like Mickey regular. He just used to. He used to do it almost every day. <laughs> no, 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 not every day. How often would he lick it? A couple times weekends. a week. Wait, I thought they only weekends. had sex once. Yeah. Bill? I know. What? Bill would lick it on weekends, right? I mean, so you were, you and Bill were an item for a while. Um, yeah. yeah, you could say that. You definitely did have sex more than once. That's cool. Yeah, well, that, it, well, why'd you, you say, call that sex? Why'd you say once? Yeah. Huh? What? Well, why'd you lot say of, once? It was a lot of box uh, licking. And, and a lot of and dick then, sucking, yeah. I bet. So you'd suck yeah, his dick, he'd lick your box. Yeah, well, right? what do you usually do when you have sex? Stuff like that. Mm. Uh, right? I'm a monster. Day four of Lady Di's internship started off a little differently than the previous three days. It began with a call from Dr. Steve who said he had spoken to Di off-air, and it was obvious that Di did not want to go to rehab. Dr. Steve also pointed out that the swelling in Di's abdomen might be due to a condition called ascites, where fluid weeps off the liver, and also may have additionally been putting pressure on Di's stomach, causing her not to want to eat. Dr. Steve even offered to set Di up with a local doctor, if she was willing. However, I think the most interesting comments from Dr. Steve came when he said that Di needed an intervention where the consequences of her drinking would be made clear to her. Dr. Steve, let me ask you this. Yeah. If she doesn't do anything, right, and continues on her way here. On her yeah. merry way. On her merry way. Yes. What do you see happening to her? Well, what will happen, and I've seen this a million times, is uh, there will be denial, 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 until there is a catastrophic event. You know, Bill comes in and finds her unconscious and can't wake her up and calls 911 and she ends up in the hospital. Oh, boy. And then that's when the process can start. Now, some people can survive that and actually have a, it's a wake-up call for them. And uh, they go through detox and rehab, and they and they actually do okay. And then some people, which are you know also, I'd say it's about fifty fifty, if that. It might be twenty eighty. They will you know go through the hospitalization and like Tippy Tom, go right back into their how, old ways again. How long before? If you're familiar with Di's story, you know how darkly accurate that statement would become. But we're not at that point of the story just yet. During the phone call with Dr. Steve, they were joined by Dr. Lydia, a psychologist and another friend of the show. Lydia tried to make Di understand that she needed to make a decision about whether she wanted to live or die, but none of it seemed to get through. The entire time the doctors were talking to her, Di was flirting with Colin Quinn or babbling to Sam Roberts. Thank you, Anthony. I wanted to thank Dr. Steve for reaching out and asking me if I could be involved because uh, I, I would very much like to help Diana. I know that Dr. Steve is working very hard, Diana. Only you can make this decision, but if you would like some psychological support, I'd be more than happy to give that to you. Dr. Uh, Lydia, two of the top doctors are trying to help her, and she's yapping to Sam. She's talking to Sam. Diana, you're a psychotic. She's yapping to Sam about Opie, taking down. I, want to like that. I, think, I, I, I think I know why Opie's making that face. You're, because... not listening. You're, a, you're not listening. The main feature of day four of Lady Di's internship was that she would be getting a makeover. The joke being that she was actually to be made up to look like the puppet Jigsaw. Because it was such a visual bit, it didn't really play into the show much. But the reveal was at least amusing. Okay. All right. Let me see. You ready? Yeah. All right. We ready? Here's, I'm going to kill uh, that I look like a... Go ahead. Let me see. What? Oh no! What? What? What's no. wrong? What? What's wrong? What? 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 You look good. You look good. Oh, Jesus. Let me say. What? They worked hard on your makeover. What you doing to me? What, what happened? Oh, you look good, what? Di. You okay. silly goose. Di, you look good. Yeah, really Do you know did. what that's from? I, I, I can't be you like, like this for the rest star. of the day. Oh. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Do you know what that's from? What? Don't you know what that's from? I don't know where. It's like a goth look. Yeah. What? All the kids are wearing it. Yeah. All the kids are wearing it these what? days. You look oh, great. I see. I see. You what look great. It? Yeah. After an exhausting phone call with Marion, they took a phone call from Jake from Elizabeth, New Jersey. 
Jake claimed to have worked with Dai at ShopRite several years ago and gave an interesting description of her abilities as an employee. So what happened that second day? So when they put her on register, they, they tried to use the, the, uh, the checkout machine. When she was processing credit cards, she wouldn't enter them to actually process the charge. People left over $4,000 worth of groceries after her second day. Without getting any, uh, without being charged for them? Is that true? Exactly. She would put the card in the machine and that's it. She was fired on the spot. It was on the Oh, lady I died. was fired after two weeks of being there. Why were you yeah. fired, Di? That's what he said. It was, wait a minute, hold on a second. Whoever you are, I, I, I really don't recall who you are. Um... What happened was, no, no, let seriously. Her explain. Hold on, hold on, yeah, let her explain um, what happened. Di. What happened was a person came in with part cash and part credit. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, your your till back then had to, you know, uh, you, uh, you couldn't go over uh, $30 or something like that. It was some, some kind of rule or something. Right. And um, what happened was the guy behind me that was working another register, I said, what do you do in this case? Because uh -huh. I, I, you know, with part cash and part credit. So uh, the guy behind me said, send this person to, to the courtesy counter. Just, you know, just uh, in other words, just charge her with the cash and the rest of it with the credit card. Uh -huh. oh, you got to send it to the courtesy counter. She walked out with it. That's that's how I got fired. My, my oh, till was uh, thirty dollars short. I don't know whether I believe Jake's story, but I definitely don't believe dies. She's a compulsive liar who told three different stories about how she was fired from Budweiser, and I don't think her explanation for being fired from ShopRite adds up, unless it was the last in a series of mistakes. Or, as Jake suggested, she had cost the store several thousand dollars and wasted company time by sending everyone who wanted to pay with a credit card to the courtesy counter. Either way, it was increasingly evident that Di was not fit to hold a job. As day four wound down, it was obvious that most of the enthusiasm for Di's internship has worn off. She interrupted an interview with Mike Baker by asking asinine questions, and she also brought in a hat and a t-shirt to try to sell to Rick Harrison from Pawn Stars. Even with Jimmy trying to build up the humor by vastly inflating the worth of Di's garbage in her mind, the bit went nowhere. Rick Harrison just seemed disgusted by the monstrosity in saw makeup trying to sell him a sweat-stained Dale Earnhardt Jr. hat and a Ron Jeremy spiced rum t-shirt for $7,500. This more or less brings us to day five of Di's internship, which is the one that nobody really talks about, because nothing especially interesting happened for the first two hours. There was a brief possibility of Di joining the hosts of Shade 45 for some cocktails, which probably would have resulted in hilarity but this idea didn't materialize. I can't imagine why they wouldn't want to have the menopausal shit machine in their studio. The only story that anybody seems to remember from this day of Di's internship actually came during the post-show, which Dan Soder was sitting in on as a guest. It was during the post-show that Di talked about her time in the Navy and getting dishonorably discharged for going AWOL. Yeah, I got it mixed up, so... <laughs> Di also said that she was in the Navy. I was. You were in the Navy? Yes, I was. Where were you in the Navy? My dad um, was on the USS uh, Chicago. What were 19, you on? Uh, no, I was not on were a ship. Were you in Nam with my dad? I was not on a ship, but but I'll tell you what. I tried to find a Navy boyfriend. Oh. You know, were you in the Navy? Then. Were you enlisted? I was enlisted, yeah. What happened? Um, no, well, I, what, I, uh, I was two Politics. years into the service, and and I, I really I didn't like it. I just went back to a regular life, you know. But you can't just leave. Did you go oh, AWOL? You can just leave. Yeah, you can. Did you just walk out? People go to jail for that. Don't I got, be hilarious I got an honorable if discharge because her? they figure I was too young to be on the job anyway. How old were you? I was like 19 years old, 20 years no, old. You're fine. You're but right. That's not too young. So well, you, you got an honorable discharge from the Navy? Uh, yeah, but I had to fight that. It was not a good discharge at first. It was uh -huh. a dishonorable. Okay. All right, so why did, they, I mean? why did they give you a dishonorable because discharge? Because I did not like where I was stationed at. Where were you stationed? I was stationed in Florida. Okay, mm -hmm. Florida's All right. beautiful. And I kept on year. leaving oh, the base. Because I did not like my job. Okay, where would you go when you left the base? Where would I go? Yeah. Oh, my God. Tell Mo me. Motels. <laughs> All right, well, let me ask you, know, you this. When uh, you were in the motels with the guys, yeah. did you blow anybody? <laughs> oh. Um, uh, I mean, that's a clear yes. Not that I really remember. But. No, I but don't But if we're going to no, have to no, go no. with a yes uh, or no, right, we'll right. go with. Uh, right. In Florida? No. 
Okay, good. No, so not. you would just go to motels and sit with people and party with people. What does? Though, but you said you don't drink or blow guys. So what does partying entail? Well, partying entails like drinking sodas, having pizzas, stuff like that. No. Was this one of the Denny mo- air check parties? Yeah. In well, motels, they, did, they didn't care. So you would that leave. I, I, you would leave. You got right. a dishonorable discharge from the Navy because you kept leaving to have pizza and soda. Yeah. As baffling as the story of Lady Di's dishonorable discharge was, the way she managed to get it turned into an honorable discharge is even more bizarre. It started with asking her parents to send her money for a plane ticket back to New Jersey. Instead, she bought a ticket to San Diego, where she went on to another military base to find a boyfriend. After living with this guy in San Diego for some time, her boyfriend had to go back on a ship for a few weeks or months, as Di put it. So, deciding that she would probably never see him again, Di asked her parents for more money so she could fly back to New Jersey for real this time. Upon her return to the Garden State, Di went to the recruiting office to explain herself, and was told to appear in front of a board in Arlington, Virginia. At some point, Di also appeared in the music video, Killed by Death, by Motorhead. It's not really relevant to the story, but I thought it was an interesting aside. To close out the internship, Sam paid Di the 250 bucks she had earned for five days of work, plus an additional $113.77, which was contributed by people around the studio. Unsurprisingly, all of this money would be gone by the following Monday. So, Bobo, what do you got? What's the breaking news? But what happened to Lady Di was she got mugged. <laughs> Lady Di got mugged? Mugged. Yeah, she got mugged. Like, probably every her, her entire purse was stolen. And for some reason, she had, a, she saw the paper with the phone number written down. See, it's my number out of all numbers. Still out of paper with your number wait, on wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. So Lady Di was mugged. And so, calls you. And calls you because that's the only number she has on her? Why? Did they take her phone? Yep, they took her phone, just about everything. She probably had lost everything. And she called me on Bill's phone. How did it happen? She just said she got mugged. My my mom might have more details already. She, she was even thinking my mom could help her. Help her how? Right. How could Bobo's mom help Lady die? Yeah. She doesn't exactly have a big success history at home. Hold on, Mom. They want to speak to you. What? After hearing about the mugging from Bobo and Bobo's mom, we got to hear Lady Di's side of the story. From Di, we learned that after the show on Friday, Di went directly to a bar called the Blarney Rock, where she spent 40 bucks on beer and chicken fingers. The mugging itself happened on Saturday outside of a Crown Chicken restaurant. What's the name of the chicken place? Who are you protecting? It's called Crown Chicken. Crown okay. Chicken. That's why we not asked KFC, for the name. Okay. Not fucking Popeyes even. It's Crown Chicken. Crown Chicken. Crown is... Oh, and they uh, crowned you. <laughs> Crown is definitely a chicken place you, you find in a lot of uh, right. ghetto-y areas. It's not a ghetto-y area. <clears throat> <laughs> it is well, you know that I don't know. Whatever. All right, so you went to get chicken for what? You and Bill? Were you bringing it home? Did you eat there? I I went actually. I went to the chicken place to get. I, I looked at the menu. I was going to get chicken, but then I said, no. Let me get something different. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> what kind of soda are we going to get? Calm down, Ed. You had a great oh, weekend. You made some money. Let's it. let's relax. Yeah, I want to hear her menu yeah. uh, debating so, before the mugging. So what? Important. You decide to get one uh, over chicken. You know, like a fried, uh, uh, what did I get? Fried whiting, the, you know, the, the, a fish. I got fish instead of chicken. Oh, fish at Crown's Chicken. Yeah. Fish well, at cr- Holy really, shit. I hope they boil the hell out of <laughs> that. I like to know how fresh that is. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. But, but anyway, so. It's probably rat. <laughs> I had my pocketbook. Kind of- Dai's story was pretty light on non whiting related details, but she stated that the mugging took place when she was leaving the Crown Chicken and heading to the liquor store to buy a 30-pack. The long story short being that Di was pushed down by a man with dreadlocks and robbed. However, when Di put Bill on the phone, he had a little more information to add to the story. I thought we were going to move on from Lady Di. I, I, I know. But she got mugged. Hey, what's up, guys? What are hey, you doing? God, Bill, Bill, Bill sorry, you doing? sorry to hear about Lady Di. That's hmm. crazy. She's out at 9.30 at night on a Saturday at a Crown Chicken? Yeah. And it's not a good neighborhood. It's, uh, of course not. Uh, say at nighttime. Right, right. So. Uh, okay, okay. You got the Mavalock Manor there. 
it's all drugs, all life, whatever. Okay? Uh huh. Why would she go there? Isn't there other places to go to eat? Uh, well, actually, I'm, the reason why I'm really pissed off. Yep. She had 28 cans of beer in the refrigerator. She's fucking drunk. Gets in my fucking truck and drives. Oh boy. She yeah. drove your truck. You know, I used to get her, you know, a twelve pack a day, and that was cool. And she was, she was all right. But when she got her father's money, okay, yeah, she was drinking thirty thirty six cans of beer a day. Holy 36 shit! Thirty six cans. Now of we're beer getting to the bottom day. of this. Yeah, yeah, Bill. There's no way hmm. she was drinking that that many beers a day. Want to make a bet? No, I'm just, I bet she was. Bet you kiss. I'm just saying it in a way like I can't believe it, but I guess it's got to be true. It is. I believe it. 30 to 36 cans a day? If you start at 8, 9 in the morning. Wow. Probably very late. easy to. No, that's late. That's late, huh? Seven, six. Six, seven in the morning. Imagine being such a monumental drunk that even though you have 28 beers at home, you needed to stop at a liquor store at 9.30 on a Saturday night to buy another 30-pack just to be safe. Imagine blowing through tens of thousands of dollars of your inheritance because you need to drink 36 beers a day. The story took another interesting turn when Di got back on the phone. One of the listeners mentioned that Di had multiple liens and judgments against her, and it didn't take long for the boys to find out exactly what they were talking about. Judgment and liens. Oh. All these? Judgment and liens. What is judgment, judgments and liens? There's ten of them. You tell me. Ten against you. Public records, statewide personal search. You got a lot of judgments and liens against you. There's ten of them. Oh, God. You see the amounts? Me. Are they all different amounts? Eight thousand, three, nine hundred. The first one is for ninety. Two hundred dollars, Capital One. The second one is for ninety-two hundred, Capital One. The third is for uh, eight thousand sure nine hundred from Capital One. Wait, Opie, you think it's the same one with interest just being added? I'm not no, sure. I, think, so. I think it's the same one with interest being added. And then the heating oil, that's for seven hundred dollars. I don't think they're the same because they have different filing numbers. Oh my God! Then there's Crown Asset Management for thirty-three hundred. Another Crown Asset Management for uh, around the same thirty-three hundred. No, it might be the same. And then Petch. Petro is another 700 again. How does this work? Then there's Midland Funding for just under 1,000. Then there's New Century Financial Services for 5,400. Oh, right, and, right, and, and then another for Midland for just under 1,000. What are you doing? Are you like opening up accounts and fucking around a little bit? No, listen to me. Those accounts were open when I was working, okay? When I was working. And then when I became homeless, there was nothing I could do about it. I mean, it, it, it's so it's so hard to explain. You know, oh, no, it's not. You just didn't pay your bills. When I lost my job, when I lost <clears> my <throat> job, I had no source of income whatsoever. Lady Di, are you also known as Diana Schmitz? That was that was my. You have to tell everybody my married name. What does it matter? That was, yep. that was when I was married. Okay. That was my name. So basically, when um. Why are you telling everybody this for? Basically, when you lost your job, <laughs> you couldn't pay your bills. That's all this is. Right. You lost your job, you couldn't pay your bills. But it looks like you're opening up all sorts of accounts, though. Uh, I think you were doing okay. some uh, fooling around here. I'm not going to attack Di for having credit card debt. Many people do. And many people struggle to pay their bills. She was also homeless for a period of time. Problem is that even when Di came into a substantial inheritance that could have cleared much of her debt, she chose to spend that money on beer. I suppose it's not surprising, considering this is the same woman who abandoned her child instead of getting a job. Over the next month, Di called several more times, mostly in regard to the fact that she had been banned from the Opie and Anthony episode of Unmasked with Ron Bennington. These calls were just your typical Lady Di babble fests, though. When Di called in on April 28th, it seemed that this call would be more of the same, as Di meandered through a story about going to the liquor gallery on Elmore Avenue, where she met a man named Ponytail Ronnie, and then went to the Lamplight Tavern for drinks. Fortunately, things took a very interesting turn when Marion called the show and recounted a story Bill had told her. You went to the, went to the Lamplight and had a couple drinks? 
Yeah, what are you going to do about it, tough guy? Yes, I did. <laughs> you tell her. Who gave you the money? Oh. Tell her to put up no. your dukes. <laughs> right. Who did they give me the money? Bill did. No, Bill gave me the money. Bill called me last night and told me you keep stealing it from the ATM. <gasps> what? He called me no, this not. No, you keep... You keep taking more money, his money, from the ATM machine. Oh. No, I don't do that. Oh, oh man. How do you get money Some to tough drink? love from the How tough How do you get guy. money to drink then, Di? Right. Of course, this is a Marion phone call, so it literally took her 10 minutes to make two points. But the condensed version of the story is that Di had friends from her homeless days that hung out on Elmore Avenue, and Marion believed Di was looking for guys to buy her drinks. Di then admitted that she had stolen 60 bucks from Bill to buy a few drinks. But Rob from Illinois had a different opinion. How much more did you take out than he said to take out? $60. $60 more? Are you what buying, a fucking piece of shit. Are you buying crack? No! A lot no. of people saying, hold on, hold on, Bob's going to get involved here. Oh. Bob in Illinois, he knows a thing or two about a thing or two. Bob, go ahead. This track can't behave here. When's the last time you smoked crack, Lady Di? Tell us when the last time was. Uh, the last time I smoked crack was... Uh, Liar. Was about, right now, about three. No, I'm not lying. Would you, would you, would you let me finish. Hold on. I want to hear what she yeah, said. When? Three years ago. How many? Three years ago. Holy shit, she smokes crack. She it all makes sense now. Crack. Bob, you're a fucking genius. Now. Because there's no way she smoked crack three years ago and then just stopped. stopped there's right. no fucking way She's without any help. Crack. And that's why you got uh, uh, Rob, robbed Rob. outside the chicken place. You were trying to co cop some crack. Oh, Bob, you're a genius. You were that, trying to cop crack. That's why she got so sick when she was here because she Because that story. Crack, and that's why she stole 60 bucks from fucking Bill. Right. Yes. For crack. Yes. This revelation led to possibly the greatest line in the entire Lady Die saga. The only time that you're addicted is when you're actually doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Die went on to explain that she used to get crack from a female friend, which Bill confirmed when he got on the line. Hey, Bill. Hey, hey guys. How, how are you doing? doing? I got a simple question for you, Bill. Uh, when was the last time Lady Die smoked? No, 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 no. no. When was the last time Lady Die smoked crack? No, with me, nine years. She just told us three, Bill. <laughs> well, you don't know all like, okay, fine, yeah. Yeah. She's over to P.G. Shit's house, Lisa. Hey, 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 hey. And. Mention, okay? I don't give a shit. What the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So she's over there? Yeah. Just don't mention her last name, but she has this friend, Lisa, that she smokes crack with. Well, yeah, you just take care of her, too. Uh huh. Wow, Bill. I, I threw her out because she, re, she gave me a stroke. I was in the hospital for a week. Jesus. She gave you a stroke? How did she give you a stroke? Yeah. Say what you want about Bill, but I honestly feel kind of bad for him here. He rescued this useless barnacle from the streets, and all she does to repay him is steal his money to buy crack. The revelation that Lady Di was a crackhead wasn't exactly shocking. But it was a major piece of the puzzle that explains so much of her strange behavior. Moreover, I think it epitomizes everything that was so compelling about Lady Di's story. She was an enigma. Opie and Anthony had known her for 15 years at this point, and she had never once mentioned smoking crack. But all it took was a question from a random caller for Di to admit that she was a crackhead. It makes you wonder how many other secrets she had that could have been revealed by asking her a single question. The story of Lady Di isn't over just yet, though. In part three of this series, we will witness Di's final days on The Opie and Anthony Show, as well as her ultimate descent into dementia. And finally, we will explore the strange psyche that allowed all of this to unfold. As always, I want to thank you for watching this video, as well as liking, commenting, and subscribing. This video took a long time to put together, and we still barely scratch the surface of certain events, like Lady Di's internship. As I said earlier, if you haven't already listened to these clips, they're worth checking out in their original context. I did my best to talk about the highlights, but it's not really a replacement for the full episodes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will have the final installment coming... sometime. 
I think I'm going to take another break between part two and three and make another MMA lore video to keep myself motivated, but we will get back to Dai's adventures in the near future. If you want to support the channel, check out my Twitter and Patreon. If you throw me a dollar or five, I'd really appreciate it. I'd also like to thank my supporters on Patreon who helped make these videos possible. Thank you, Trauma Hound, Derp Patronus, Dan Thomas, Bike Roll Balls, Bone CK, CP, The Son of Man, Neem, Origami Fleshlight, Kevin Howard, Medication Doesn't Work, and Jackie. It's been a little while since we last talked about Lady Di. Under normal circumstances, it would be easy to forget many of the events that we have already discussed, but during the intermission, the world has quite literally fallen into chaos, so we might do well with a little refresher. In the first episode of this series, we were introduced to Diana Lady Di Orbani, an otherwise unexceptional fan of the Opie and Anthony show. Over the years, many details of her life, mundane and bizarre, were revealed to the listeners. As she sunk deeper into alcoholism and a self-centered obsession with the radio show, the other aspects of her life waned in importance. She lost her job and then her son. Eventually, she ended up living next to the railroad tracks with other vagrants, where she traded sexual favors for alcohol. Ultimately, she even lost the attention of the radio host she so desperately desired. For a period of six years, Di would not appear on the show again. Then, in mid-2013, a random phone call into the Opie and Anthony Post show brought Lady Di back to the attention of the hosts and the listeners alike. Several appearances over the following year painted a grim picture of her life. She was still without a job and leeching off her roommate and occasional love interest, Bill. Di had never regained custody of her son, and she had exhausted roughly $60,000 of inheritance from her dead parents. In a final bid to help a character who had produced years of humor for the show, Opie and Anthony offered Di an opportunity to be a paid intern for a week. It was a shit show. Literally. Di's withdrawals were so bad that by the second day, she had overwhelmed the serious bathrooms and she was nearly banned from the building. The bit was only allowed to continue under the agreement that Di be banned from using the facilities. Nevertheless, Di produced one of the most legendary weeks of radio in Opie and Anthony history, largely by divulging strange pieces of information about her personal life. Eventually, the internship had to come to an end, but the grotesque story of Lady Di would carry on as it always had. Only days after the internship, Di was mugged outside of a chicken joint and robbed of the $400 she had earned while working for the show. The truthfulness of this story was later cast into doubt when Di's friend Marion called the show and stated that Di had been stealing money from her roommate Bill. This story eventually led to the revelation that Di had a past history of smoking crack, which in turn led many people, including the hosts of the show, to believe that Di had actually been mugged while attempting to buy drugs in a shady part of Elizabeth, New Jersey. A week after the initial phone call where Lady Di's crack use came to light, she called the show to put an end to the rumors. However, Di only dug the hole deeper by giving multiple different dates for her last crack binge, and nobody believed that someone with such an addictive personality would be able to quit crack cold turkey as she claimed. Ah, uh, it's me, Lady Di. How's everything? Uh, look, we don't have time for this yeah, shit much today. Too early. We got Louis C.K. coming in in ten minutes, so make this quick. Yeah. Hi, Di. Okay. What's the problem? Um, I want I want to put an end to this uh, crack rumor. Okay. <laughs> I do not smoke crack. All right. I just want to let everybody know. All right, that I don't do that. This is, okay. uh, sounds like a certain mayor, what, doesn't it? When was the last time no, you smoked no. crack? I told you, a couple of years ago. Uh, <laughs> it went from three to yeah. one no, 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 to actually, a couple. Actually, no, 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 no. Actually, it was two years ago. <laughs> like, a whole year. So it's, it's three, year. it's one, it's What's two. You're like a fatter Rob Ford. <laughs> yes. What is the difference? A year. Two, three years, What's the difference? A year, a year yeah, 365 yeah, you're, days. You're a man. To the rumors Do you understand I why the rumors are out there? Because you said you you did smoke crack, which you never told us in all the times we've talked to you. And then you said it was three years. And then on the after show, you said it was about a year. And now you're saying it's two years. What? Do, uh, all right, now, what does two or three years matter? It, it matters a lot. All right. It means no. you're lying. 
That's what it means. It, 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 it means you're a liar. I'm not, I, I'm not lying, Anthony. I'm, I'm not, not lying. lying. And, and, it's my lie, die. And, and when, when you were smoking crack, how often did you do that? Not, not really often. Yeah, not really often. Um, how, you know, maybe, maybe once, you know, like, like one day a week or something like that. No, no, not even that. <laughs> wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Um, uh, one day a week. That means you've smoked no, crack. Wait, wait. You smoke crack yes, fifty-two you know times a year. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Now you guys. Go. Wait, Do you wait, understand on. why the rumors are out there? Because you just on. lie through everything. <laughs> Plus, you say them. Right, if, and if you're admitting that you used to do it once a week, then that probably means you did it twice a week, which means you're now you're talking about a hundred times a year you're smoking crack. That is a no, major no, no. problem. I I the reefer. And how did you get off the crack? I I stopped doing it. Without oh. rehab or anything. No, I didn't need a rehab to stop that. No! Oh, listen, <laughs> listen to how offended she is at the even mere thought. She might need rehab to get... She's already fucking five natty ices deep on a Monday, and, 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 and she's insulted that you insinuate she might need rehab to get off crack. <laughs> crack. This, no, this woman's fucking bizarre. When asked whether she had used any of her inheritance money to buy drugs, Di was at first adamant that it was not possible, but after a few minutes she admitted to being unsure. Since her father had passed away less than three years prior, this obviously refuted Di's claims that she hadn't smoked crack in the last three years. Anthony, I don't know. When was, last, <laughs> when was the last time you smoked crack? I told you, two years ago. Mm -hmm. With some of your dad's money, right? <sighs> a little bit, be honest. Come on. No, no, no. Uh, uh, you know, wait, wait, hold on, hold on a second, Sam. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, I took money out of an ATM. Okay, money now out of the add, ATM put a verb in. And, right. And pronoun. Right. Okay, Lady Di. Uh, when, when, when your father died in 2012, correct? Yes. Less than two years ago, correct? Name, name a country. No, it was September of. Name a country. Yeah. Okay, September. I'm doing my Mad Lib. Name. I'm doing my Lady Di uh, Mad Lib. September. Now. Die. September of 2012 was less than two years ago. You just said it. It, it is. Po you don't know whether or not you used your dad's money uh -oh. for crack. You got the money less than two years ago. Oh shit! You just exposed yourself. You exposed yourself. You smoked <laughs> crack less, less than, than two, two years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Well, then you put two and two together. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> just another lie, though. It's just another lie. Hold on. Later that same day, Di called in for a second time and was tricked into believing that she was talking to Louis C.K. Di tried to pretend that she was familiar with C.K., but her lies quickly came unraveled. Hi, Di. Hi. 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 How's everything? Oh, I don't know. I am good. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. That's all you mm, want to say to him? That's it? I am, a I am absolutely good. How are you doing? I am good. Uh, do you like my show? Uh, yes, I do. Mm, I, you what part of my show do you like? Are you on Comedy Central? Oh. Um, no, I'm on FX. <sighs> oh, on FX. Oh, my God. Did we get FX, Bill? Now that, it, now that it's all out in the open, yeah. That's it. Why don't you, know? you die? <laughs> I'll do a show about a big fucking pig that dies and shits all over herself, and I'll call it the cunt who shits herself. <laughs> That'd be a great episode, Louie. That would be oh, funny. Oh, my goodness. That would be really funny. Yeah. No, no, it would not be funny. We could just use your dead body and we'd just kick it like it's a big piece of shit in the street. <laughs> I guess so. What, you know, what else is new? Yeah, a well, good one. <laughs> Why don't you admit no, no, no. to Louie that you used to smoke crack? Yeah, just tell me. Yeah, well, well, didn't you used to smoke crack? No. I ain't never Louis? smoked crack, you dumb fatso. Ah, uh, you don't You lie. make fatso noises. <laughs> <laughs> don't uh, lie. Shut up. Don't lie like that because everybody experimented with any kind of drug or anything like no, that. No, I was busy raising not, a family and being a good person. You're a pig. Not everyone. She thinks everyone just experimented and smoked crack. Oink, yeah. Oink, I'm a pig. Yeah, that's right. There Why you don't go. you kiss a train? Yeah. <laughs> While listening to Jim Norton berate Di as Louis C.K. is pretty funny, this phone call stands out to me for the moment when the boys ask Di why she wanted to be on the radio. 
and all she had to offer was that she loved them and wanted to talk. I love you guys. Oh, we don't love you. you. Oh, go She's away. She's talking to our beer cans. <laughs> <laughs> They're all lined up. Yeah, I love and the you blacksmith that's shooing her. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking disaster. Uh, I, you, you know I love you guys. Right. Uh, yeah. We don't care. And I do care oh, because oh, I love you guys and I always will. And, you know, I, I've known you for over 20 years and no. that's it. We love you too, Di. Thank you very much, Louie. <laughs> I don't love you. <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter, but I love you. You're a pig. I love you. <laughs> Marion's a yeah, cunt. Thanks. Thanks. Marion's a cunt. <laughs> Even other weirdos associated with the show, like Bobo and Stalker Patty, were actual fans who listened on a regular basis. Dai's sole purpose for existing seemed to be calling into a radio show for personal validation, something she was so obsessed with that she would even forego using the restroom, according to her friend Marion. You know, I'm going to tell you something right now. Um, Bill called me, mm -hmm. right? And right after I guess she talked to you, Bill called me, and I called him back. And she shit all over herself. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, uh, what do you mean she, she shit all over herself? I don't know. Bill called me and left this message on my uh, cell phone. And I'm like, what's the matter? Since Diane was sitting there waiting to talk to you, she had to go to the bathroom, and she couldn't hold it. And she peed all over herself. Oh, my... She, why didn't she go to the bathroom? There's a bathroom in her. She's in her apartment. Because she's gross, okay? She's getting to be too gross. And you know what? I don't even want to talk to her anymore. Because it's like every time I talk to her, she, something else is happening with well, her. Marion, what disgusting. what can we do to help this woman? Nothing. Sam, let it go. She is out of control. She is ridiculous, and you know something? She is going to die of cirrhosis of the liver. Jesus Christ. Well, Marion, thank you for the update. Uh, I'm sure we'll get into it on O&A today. By this point, the show had all but entirely returned to the pattern of being frustrated with Di's incessant phone calls and lack of anything interesting to add to the conversation. When she called in on May 12th, the boys tried to convince Di that the upcoming Super Show 3 would be a black tie event, and she would need to buy a gown. But the conversation went nowhere. In frustration, they flat out asked her why she was a fan of the show. All that Di could come up with was their time on WNEW, which was, by this point, 12 years in the rearview mirror. Goodness. What How are they fans of the show? Wait, that's wait, that's you, what I'll never understand. No. Do you want How is she a fan wear, of the show? Do you want, I was always a fan of your show. You, are, you talking, uh, are you talking about me? No, we're talking about some other fucking ill-timed moose. I was always a fan of your show. Uh-huh. Ever since back 20 years ago. No, Why are you a no, fan of our show? Why am I a fan of your show? First of all, I like you guys. All right? And second of all, um, when I was first introduced to you, uh, you know, to you guys a long time ago, I just took a liking to you. I used to listen to you on WDW. See, see, no, not, see, see she doesn't... There's nothing there. There's what are nothing. you talking, you verbose ox? No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> it's pathetic enough that Di would waste so much of her life calling into a show that abused her. The fact that she was completely out of touch with the radio show she sought attention from just adds another layer of sadness to the story. After cycling through a few questions related to crack and Di's bathroom habits, Opie and Anthony decided to call it quits for the day and left Di on the phone alone. Colin Quinn briefly called in to talk about the upcoming Super Show, but after a few minutes, even he was fed up with Di's pointless blabbering and left her without anyone to talk to. During the ten-minute span that Di was on the line by herself, we got another glimpse into her grotesque domestic life, as her irate roommate Bill could be heard screaming at her to get off the phone. I can't, I got my glasses. You got your glasses right there. Well, oh, you're too busy on a fucking phone. You what? I'll take that phone and throw it. Get the fuck out of here. I'm trying to give you the, the thing. Here. That fucking phone's more important. I'll throw that motherfucker. I'm going outside. I'll throw that fucking phone away. I'm tired of you with that fucking phone. I'm sick of it, Diana. <laughs> Sick 
Yeah, yeah, take this fucking shit. Get the fuck! That phone's going! That phone is... You had four beer, you had more fucking four beer. <laughs> Every fucking day with you! <laughs> don't fucking matter! You don't give a fuck! The following two months were pretty uneventful. Dai did attend the Super Show 3 in mid-May, but as with the other Super Shows, we didn't really learn anything new or particularly interesting about her. During a phone call in early June, a man named Lou from Jersey, who Dai had been speaking with over Twitter and texts, revealed that she had been back to the Crown Chicken where she had been mugged earlier in the year. Oh, what? Oh, was Bill, that Bill? You're going back down, you're going, you're going no, back but what? Crown Chicken. Yeah. You went back to Crown Chicken, Di? That's the site where you, uh... No! Back. No, I did not! No! You went to the ATM! Yeah, no, I told you, uh, uh, the second time I went to Crown Chicken, I went to the ATM. All right? The second time. Why would you go to an ATM near the place you got mugged? She bought um, drugs. Unless you were going was, there to get early. drugs. It was early, She's going to get drugs. and I had to get Look, you out. The other stupid twat. I'm, I'm not a dumb enabler. I know that. I know what you're yeah, doing. You're, you're, bu drugs. you're buying drugs. Let everyone else listen to your stupid stories and make believe they're real. Uh, no, it's the truth. I no, you're going to, to get drugs if you're going back to an ATM near Crown Chicken where you're mugged. With Bill's fucking ATM card. Right. I'm not a yeah. family member. Di tried to say that she had only been back to the Crown Chicken to use the ATM near the liquor store, but this did little to change the belief that she was still actively buying crack. Aside from a brief conversation in late June, where she complained about not being able to attend Anthony's July 4th pool party, it wouldn't be until July of 2014 that we would receive another significant update about Lady Di. By then, the entire Opie and Anthony universe had undergone a radical change. My roommate passed away. Bill? Bill? Bill died, huh? Yes. Yes, he did. Oh, wow. Yep. Um, uh, uh, I kept on telling him. He, he kept on having stomach aches and stuff like that. And I kept on telling him, I'm going to, you know, let me take you to the hospital. You know, well, not let me take you, but let of me get an ambulance not. to take you to the hospital. Right. Right. Okay. And, um. You know, he refused to go. He refused to go to the hospital. He refused. He refused. All right? And, uh, you know, finally, Sunday, I said, listen, you know, you, he ran to the bathroom, and that was the last time. I said, that's it. I called 911, and he never made it out of that hospital alive. Wait, he went to the bathroom. He was vomiting? Yes, he was vomiting. Yes, he was. Was it blood? He was vomiting blood? Blood. 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 Yes. Yeah, it's just... That's alcoholism, right? Yeah. That's no, no, no. He had an ulcer. He had an ulcer, and he had a, a pancreatic, uh, something to do with his pancreas. Oh. All right. When and, did, when uh, did this happen? I, uh, well, this happened on Sunday, actually. Uh, a couple of days ago. A couple of days ago. He just died yesterday. Oh wow. Where are you now? The exact cause of Bill's death is unknown, but it was almost certainly related to chronic alcoholism. Di had mentioned that Bill suffered from pancreatitis and two callers suggested that Bill probably experienced esophageal varices, a medical condition typically caused by liver failure. Since blood can't pass through the liver normally, it tries to find other pathways through the body. This leads to varicose veins in the esophagus that can rupture and cause a person to bleed their entire blood volume out of their mouth. Di confirmed this by saying that the bathroom that Bill threw up in was covered in blood that she had to clean. The lady, lady Di, when you I went in, right oh that. my God, Lady Di, when you went into the bathroom, he was puking up blood, a lot of blood. I didn't go to the bathroom. The paramedics, the paramedics did. Did you go in the bathroom after the fact? Was there blood everywhere? Yes, I cleaned it. Okay, yeah. that that answers it my question. All over the place. So this guy might have nailed what he died of. It's honestly disturbing how nonchalant Di is about Bill's death. She watched him vomit blood to death and wasn't sure if that was enough to get her to stop drinking. Will this wake well, yeah, you up? Yeah, I know, I know, but, uh, you know. Will this wake you up? A lot of people are asking, will this wake you up, Lady yeah. Di? I don't know what's going to wake me up anymore. Well, maybe you'll learn from watching uh, your friend I, vomit you know, his stomach out. Right. Yeah, uh, well, you know what? You know what? It might wake me up.
It might wake me up. Yeah, no one's, no one's but, no one's buying I, but it. I, but I, I, I don't know for sure. Okay. Right. I don't know for sure because if nothing woke me up, you know, so far this this far. I, you know, I mean, I'm still. Let's say hi to Brody in Dallas. I, I, I don't want to listen to that crap. Thanks. Yeah. You, morning, you boys. just lie a lot. Go ahead, Brody in Dallas. The only time she showed any kind of emotion was when she was bizarrely avoiding saying the word morgue on the air. Die. Wait a second. I asked if uh, Bill. I said, so Bill's still in the morgue, and she said, yeah, Bill's in the fridge. That's right. Because I don't like to say that word, the M word, on the air. Since Bill was the sole source of income for the two of them, his passing raised obvious questions about how Di would be able to pay her bills. The situation was complicated in part by the fact that Bill was still legally married and his wife was the only one who could have him removed from the hospital. Have you built his bank account yet? <laughs> what? Have you grabbed that no. ATM card and, and, you know, no. taken a few? He's not going to need it. You might as well take a few from the ATM, no? Listen to me. No, uh, no, I, I'm not using his money in any way at all, okay? Di didn't seem particularly worried, though, and brushed the issue aside by saying that if she couldn't pay rent, she would live in her truck. Dr. Steve eventually called in to give his opinion on the situation, and he delivered what I believe is one of the most prophetic statements of the entire Lady Di saga. <laughs> if he was putting the brakes on her... Are you are you guys then, gonna do Christmas? Now that he's gone, we are in for a, a um in for what? At this point, it's worth mentioning that a lot of the Lady Die phone calls made during her final years on the show are either lost or very difficult to find. This may have something to do with racist woman biting child groomer Anthony Cumia accosting a black woman in Times Square and then delivering a racial tirade on Twitter, which ultimately resulted in him being fired by Sirius in July of twenty fourteen and Opie and Jim trying to continue on with a show that was much less popular. Or it may be due to the fact that most of Di's appearances during this time frame occurred on the pre-slash-post shows hosted by Sam Roberts. Roberts looks like an orangutan that died in a swamp and had its bloated corpse picked at by carrion birds. That's not really germane to this video, but I still felt like saying it. Either way, much of the information we have from the latter half of 2014 and onward is second-hand. Such was the case when Di called the show in early December, and Sam mentioned that she had been caught asking people for money outside of a Burger King in Elizabeth. Same. You, know oh, you did ever as an intern. We didn't. You know what I found out about Lady Di? Somebody messaged me on Facebook yesterday. Yeah. Like two weeks ago, we talked to her, and she had a job, like, cleaning up the projects or something. She had a well, job. Wait, uh, no, no, no. I don't have that job anymore. Because oh. you know what she's doing now? She's at the no. Burger King in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Just asking people for money. What? Well, he he told you, he, he actually called you and told you that. He messaged me on Facebook. Oh my God! But it's true, right? Well, well yeah, well, yeah, yes and no. Lady no. Di, let me just say it. This story was confirmed the next day by Marion, who added a startling bit of new information to the story. But you know something? Yeah. Bill told Diana to stop drinking. Right. Stop drinking. Right. Go for help. Right. She refused to listen to you guys. She refused to listen to me. She refused to listen to Bill. And you know what? You know what she said to me the other day on the phone? Tell me. I'd rather fucking die than go back to work. What? Diana, yeah. Marion also claimed that Di was once again hanging out with shady characters and derelicts suggesting that she was looking for somebody else to support her in exchange for sexual favors. Her relationship would prove to be short-lived, though. In January of 2015, Di called in and stated that her boyfriend had broken up with her because he didn't want to be involved with the radio show. This was backed up by one of the show's interns, Adrian Fernandez, who had been interacting with Lady Di off-air, probably because he was the one who had to walk Lady Di to the bathroom during her internship. Adrian, he's uh, he's not here yet. Today. Adrian, why are you calling Lady Di? I, originally, I wanted to do some investigating about her new her and her new guy. Right. To figure out what was going on. Yes, yeah, she's, well, she's got, the, she's got the a new guy. guy. Well, there's an update today. on that. Yeah, not anymore. Why? He said that he doesn't want to be involved with this radio stuff, and he, he doesn't want to hang out no, with I, 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 We don't want her. Adrian, Adrian, yeah. Adrian, Adrian, 
That's Did he die? What he told me, okay. And um, I said, fine. If you don't want to get involved with, uh, with, with, you know, with the radio show, that's fine. With I don't care about that. Yeah, but Adrian, didn't you say that they're not exactly broken up? He still comes over to have to sex what? with her. Yeah, to fuck her. Yeah, and get high. No, 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 no. Adrian, Adrian, he just comes over sometimes to hang out with me. You told me you guys fuck. <laughs> no. Yes, you did. <laughs> no, no, no. I did not. Diana. No. The more concerning aspect of this phone call was that Di's health seemed to be in total freefall. Within the last month, Di claimed that she had fractured both of her feet and needed to use a walker to get around. During this same day, Di called in a second time but fell asleep while she was on hold and could be heard snoring when they eventually took her call. Fair. All right. Lady Di? Hold on, don't talk. I gotta time you. L Lady Di? She probably fell asleep. Oh, good. She's been on hold an hour and a half. <laughs> Lady <laughs> Die. <laughs> Lady Die. She's still there. She's already two seconds in. Hello? She's sleeping. Maybe she did her last name. Hold on. Lady Die? Listen. <laughs> She's sleeping. <laughs> She's sleeping. Even in her injured state, Di still managed to hobble into the studio for an appearance alongside Sandy Kane and Mike Pachetti in early February. Within less than a minute of being in studio, Lady Di was already begging Opie for cab fare, and it was decided that if she was going to get paid, they would have to check her ass for hemorrhoids. This task fell to intern Adrian due to their growing extracurricular entanglements. All right, one more. Ah, oh, Lady Di is a trooper. That's why we love you, Lady Di. Okay. All right, she's bending over. Forward, forward, forward. All right, she's spreading her cheeks. Oh, come on, man. You're going to put yourself in the chest. Oh, man. Look back, you pussy, baby. Oh, he's puking. Oh, no. I got to get out of here, Opie. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Okay. Sorry, sick, too, you know? Okay, well, from your own hemorrhoid. Okay, that's all right. All right. Adrian's off-air interactions with Lady Di would see him play an important role in her last few moments as a part of the show, one that would initially put him at odds with o and slash o and producer Eric Erock Nagel. As with most newcomers to the show, Adrian wanted to make a name for himself. The method he attempted to use was the tried-and-true tactic of messing with Erock, but he took his trolling a little too far. This was at least in part because of Jim Norton, who encouraged Adrian to bring Lady Di to Erock's 40th birthday party, which did not go well. Di spent approximately two minutes in Eric's house, had a single shrimp that she didn't like, and after she left, Erock put the chair she sat on in the garage so it could be sterilized. Lady Di is a self-centered lump of shit. But this is one of the few times I actually felt bad for her. Something about this incident seemed like it went beyond the acceptable level of humiliation, and Di's remarks in the cab after being forced to leave the party were kind of heartbreaking. You're right. And then, Lady, more than it. And then you talked to Lady Di in the Uber car. Yeah. All right. How do you feel about the way you were treated tonight? Not too good. Like what happened? I was there five minutes. And? The most. And then, and then uh, they told they told me, well, the party's over. You gotta go. Why do you think they did that? Because the party was over, right? What? The party was over. Well, why do you think that the party ended right when you got there? Well, do I look repulsive or something or what? Could you pause that know. and let everyone just enjoy the irony of that question? <laughs> As punishment for his actions, it was determined that Adrian would have to spend a night in a hotel with Lady Di an event which was dubbed the Vacadrian, much to Jim Norton's chagrin. Many of Di's antics were live-tweeted by Adrian and dissected on the following day's episode of Opie and Jim. The night got off to a rocky start, as Di was in the process of taking a shit when Adrian arrived at her apartment to pick her up. From here, they immediately went to the liquor store, where they picked up some beer and cigarettes, and Adrian paid off Di's debt to a stock boy. 30-pack. Why can't we just get a 12-pack? 12-pack is good, too. 12-pack is fine. 12-pack of uh, the tall boys. A tw why not just a 12-pack of 12 ounces? All right, whatever. Yeah, that's good, too. That's fine. Mm -hmm. According to Adrian, Di wanted to start drinking immediately, and he had to threaten to put the beer in the trunk of his car to get her to agree not to drink on the drive to their hotel. While they were in traffic, Adrian was able to record several humorous videos of Di singing along to the radio. 
The shenanigans continued when they arrived at their hotel, the Radio City Apartments, which Di seemed strangely enthusiastic about. Yeah. Okay. okay. Wow, kitchen and everything, huh? Pretty cool. That's nice. Once in the hotel, Di consumed four tall boys and began making repeated sexual advances towards Adrian, who, it should be said, was a year younger than her son. This was a, I, one of my favorite ones because it got flirty, this yeah. video. Yeah, we were all relaxing before dinner. And just chilling out a little bit. Taking the edge off, yeah. I see that you're, uh, you're laying down on the bed. She's sitting by your feet there. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's play this video. This room, so I would assume it does. Why can't I get a foot massage? Well... Philip is here to meet any bomb. Take your shoes off first. Oh. <laughs> he takes his shoes off. Adrian, I guess we're not going to have dinner tonight, are we? Here's an idea. Yeah, we are. You're, you're going to go right to the point. <laughs> she thinks you want to fuck? Yes. <laughs> right away. She's like, oh, this old gag. <laughs> she knows. Right. Get that she did down out. this road before. I guess I got to suck it first. She goes and gets the KY. <laughs> did you realize in that moment that, like, all joking aside, everything we said on the show aside, like, this is reality, this is a serious <laughs> moment, she would absolutely have had sex with you. Shoes went right back on and we were out the door for dinner. <laughs> you didn't let her rub your feet? No. Well, nice she foot didn't want to rub my feet. She, she wanted to get right to the dick. <laughs> <laughs> you really think she would have went for it there? Absolutely. Because uh, uh, maybe a half second after I, I stopped recording, she placed the hand right on the upper thigh. When her attempts failed, Di tried to get a look at Adrian's penis while he was using the bathroom. Legs. I'm trying to use the bathroom. Look. What do you want? What? Look. What about it? Do we have the same kind of phone? I don't know. I'm trying to take a shit. Go ahead. Help yourself. After settling in for a while, the pair went out for dinner. When they arrived at the restaurant, Di was so desperate for more alcohol that she asked the hostess, not even the server, to bring her the biggest glass of beer they had. This turned out to be a 24-ounce glass of beer, which Di drank two of during her meal of chicken tenders and potato skins. Adrian was unfortunately unable to record Lady Di in the restaurant, but instead recounted what Di told him of her plans to pay for her rent. Anything happen at dinner? Yeah, it got serious. She started talking to me about rent, everything like that. Um, part of the reason why we didn't get intimate was because she told me that she's at a point now where she's thinking about maybe, possibly, selling her body. <laughs> could, could, she could she literally put a worse product on the market? <laughs> That's not the big money maker. Well, she thinks she'd be able to get like 200 bucks for a night. And um, she, could, she literally couldn't get that if she moved in with you for a month. <laughs> wow, she said that? Yes. Why, why does she, because she needs money that bad? Mm -hmm. Here we go. We, we got to fucking give her more money again. Because what, she's behind on rent? Two and a half months. Two and a half months. Did she explain how she would go about this? <laughs> not really. She, she just said, like, oh, yeah, you know. I don't have a I don't have a great body to offer, but somebody will pay for it. Oh, that's sad. We're having fun. With their meals finished, they returned to the Radio City apartments, where Di resumed her attempts to seduce Adrian, who was just trying to go to sleep. For luggage, Di had brought a plastic grocery bag, which contained fistfuls of candy from the apartment's reception desk, as well as a change of underwear, and one other essential item. All right, now oh. she's going into her plastic bag. This well, is her luggage. But when I, this is when I had tried to finally call it a night and make my little bed on the floor and go to sleep. Yeah. And she said, oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I want to show you what I, what I brought with me. I bring this with me <gasps> everywhere. Okay. So you're like, you're like, okay, I'm shutting off the light. We're just going to go to sleep. And she's like, wait, I want to show you this item I have. Yeah, big surprise. What were you thinking was in the bag? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I had no, no idea. What, what time was this? Be. This was probably around 11 o'clock. Oh, okay. My God. Uh, all right. Look what I carry around with me all the time. Oh my god, it's all it's all over the place. It's all over the place. Ew, it's all over the place. KY jelly. See? 
Oh. You know, just in case. Oh. <laughs> Moments like this. <laughs> she wanted to oh. fuck you so bad. <laughs> KY Jelly. Oh. Oh. When all of the video clips of the vacadrian were exhausted, Opie and Jim brought Lady Di, who had been sleeping on the sofa, into the studio to discuss the past night's events. When questioned about the KY Jelly, Di initially pretended not to know why she brings it with her everywhere, but ultimately admitted that her ex-boyfriend informed her that her pussy was too dry. <laughs> um, so you were with a guy and he tried to put it in and he couldn't? Yeah. Okay, and what, what happened? What, how did he finally get it in? Well, he was the one that, uh, that bought me the KY in the first place. <laughs> oh, you're with a guy and he bought you some KY because he had tried before? Uh-huh. And it was just too dry. That's, that would be my ex, uh, whatever you want to call him, lover, or whatever. Fuck Bill? Although there were no more videos to dissect, Adrian had recorded some additional audio clips from their night together. Aside from a clip of Lady Di farting... <laughs> There were a few clips that made it clear how truly desperate she was to have sex with him. Uh, does this need a setup, Adrian? I don't think the so. First? Okay, let's yeah. just start playing uh, some audio. Now, let's make one thing perfectly clear. Okay. We are not having any kind of sexual relations. Wait, what? I, I sound like Bill Clinton when I say this. Yes, lives. you do. <laughs> Party pooper. Party pooper. I'm just telling you, it ain't gonna happen. Although you could always buy me uh, some beer and maybe uh, I'll think about it or some champagne or something. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, I did say that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's yeah. conflicting. You said absolutely not, and mm -hmm. but then said, well, maybe if I have some champagne or beer. Oh, okay, let's move on with the audio. Um, this is about malt liquor. It's good. You can't have any. Why not? You won't give me a taste of it? No. Oh, my God. Okay. Nine okay. percent on notice of improvement in one hour. Gold bomb really works. There's only one egg. It just tastes better. Well, if you don't give me a taste of your malt liquor, I won't give you a taste of this either. <laughs> Would you oh, point no. to when you said oh, that? Oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, Di, come on. You got me good, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I did. Di, what are you saying? You don't give me a taste of malt liquor. What are you pointing at? Are you pointing at the... Come on. <laughs> yeah, I did. Pointed at your cooch? Uh, yeah. No, yeah. okay. Because you could have pointed at your, your backside. No, 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 no. One no, or both no. of your boobs. No, not my backside. What are you doing? Why are you opening? <laughs> just this is just an aside, but I've always found Lady Di's sexual confidence to be one of the most confusing aspects of her personality. Maybe it was just liquid courage, but she was perpetually horny and seemed to have no concept of what a grotesque disaster she was. Which is why I doubt she had any genuine intention to sell her body. When they pressed her about the comment she made to Adrian over dinner, Di basically admitted it was all a stupid thought in her head. Oh, Last yeah. one. Sorry. Lady Di, there is one other thing. Yes. I, I just remembered. You yes. should talk to Opie what? about what, <clears throat> what you've been thinking about doing to try and get that rent money. Ah, just uh, dealing with welfare and stuff like that. No, no, no but like, remember, remember what was that thing? What were you considering doing? What, what line of work? What line of work? Yeah, yes. we, we talked about it at dinner. I forgot. Remind me. <laughs> you were thinking about prostituting yourself out. That made us all oh, sad. Yeah, well. That made us sad. Ah, uh, what can I tell you? Or, and and just one of the just one of the things I was thinking about. And how are you going to do it? But it ain't going to work, you know. But no, how are you going to do it? I don't know. I think it's far more likely that Di would simply try to find another man like Bill that she could have sex with in exchange for a place to live without ever technically prostituting herself. The comments to Adrian were probably nothing more than an attempt to get people to give her money out of pity. With the recap of the vacadrian over, Opie and Jim decided to end the day by allowing Lady Di and Stalker Patty to close the show out. During the aptly named Trainwreck Radio, Patty asked Di numerous questions about her financial situation. We learned that Di had been benefiting from temporary rental assistance, but without confirmation from her doctor that she would be out of work for a year due to her injuries, the state was not willing to give her an extension. When Patty raised the question of how Di came to be disabled in the first place, Di gave a different explanation than the previously mentioned story about breaking her feet. Mm-hmm. And now, you, and, how did she come to be disabled in the first place? What happened? 
What what happened that you came to be disabled? You had um, a job for 25 years or something? Yeah, it might have something to do with that. I'm, I'm not saying it had anything, anything to do with that job, but I did do some uh, physical work. Yeah, but no, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, what happened that you became disabled? All right. What are you doing? What Okay, now, um, uh, what I, ca I became disabled because after I sold my truck, I had to walk around a lot. Yeah. And I, I, was still, I was still looking for work, mm -hmm. okay, but I had to walk around and, you know, do these kind of things. All right, and, um, you know, and, and then all of a sudden, you know, my back started to hurt, you know, just by walking around. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, will you stop with that already? What's wrong? No, what? come on. All right now. He's, all right. Um, anyway, so so what happened was, now this is really this is really serious. Um, all of a sudden, it just got to the point that I could not really walk that far, okay? Because my my hip would hurt, my knee would hurt, and everything. And that doctor did not. Well, not. <laughs> Frank in the Bronx, how you doing? <laughs> The most interesting moment from this segment came when Di admitted that she had used Bill's money to pay for a month's rent. This, of course, proves that she was lying when she called the show after Bill's death and said that she didn't have access to his money. Huh? When, when did things start going wrong? Um, well, after my roommate passed away. All right. Yeah, um, and, you, and uh, yeah, uh, thank but, but, you. And, um, you know, and, was, and then then things just started to, like, go haywire. You know, for a while there, I was be able to take care of myself. I had to sell the truck for, for a month's rent. I had to use some of his money, unfortunately, for the first month. All right. He, he passed away in July. And then August, I had to use his money to pay the rent. OK, mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to do it that way, but I had to. And then uh, for the month of August, I had to sell the truck. Knowing Lady Di, there's no way she didn't spend as much of Bill's money on beer as possible before paying the rent. Then, when that money ran out, she sold her truck and probably used as much of that money as she could on beer, too. I think my theory is supported by the fact that even though she was months behind on her rent, Di still denied that her drinking was contributing to her financial woes. What do you, how can you give up on the drinking? I don't know. That's probably your rent money right there. No, not well. Yes and no. Yes and no. I mean, you know, I I, I don't like uh, you know, buy like three thirty packs a day, three thirty packs a day or anything like that, you know, and just sit there and drink all day. Four four thirty packs. No, I don't. I don't do stuff like that. Shortly after this appearance, Adrian and Doctor Steve started a GoFundMe to pay for Lady Di's rent and work with her landlord to keep her from being homeless. The exact details of the situation are a bit hazy, though. Both Adrian and Dr. Steve agree that Di's landlord was a good guy who was doing what he could to help her out. And even though the GoFundMe didn't raise enough money to cover Di's back rent, it was enough to pay for at least one month, and welfare would take care of the rest while her landlord would move her into a smaller apartment. From what I vaguely remember about these events as I watched them unfold back in 2015, there was a plan to raise more money for Di's rent, but it hinged upon her going to rehab. Obviously, that didn't happen, and the payment Adrian made to Di's landlord seems to be the last bit of assistance she directly received from the Opie and Anthony universe. For her part, Di seemed completely ungrateful and repeatedly called and messaged Adrian demanding the money. When Adrian went to deliver the money to Di's landlord, he shot a series of videos to document the sorry state of her existence, which would later be broken down in Opie and Jim. Danny, you have a very nice home. Thank you very much. Why do you sleep on a leather thing a instead of a though. bed? Huh? Why do you sleep on a leather thing instead of a bed? Because I like it. What else do you like? Uh, what do you mean, what else do I like? What else do you like? I like drinking my beer, I like relaxing, I like smoking my cigarettes, and I just woke up uh, like a little while ago, like, ugh. What are your plans today? Uh, trying to nurse my leg and looking at these papers, see what I have to do. By now, even Adrian was fed up with Di's behavior. During the visit, Di didn't even thank him for the GoFundMe. Instead, the first thing she asked was, why didn't you bring a fan? According to Adrian, Di also had no toilet paper and her apartment smelled like shit, which he attributed to her unwashed vagina. And I've been in disgusting apartments. I wanted to stay there longer to do... 
uh, get some more audio from her, but I couldn't. Because of, of the smell? Where do you Horrible. think the smell was coming well, from? Her vagina. Her vagina? Yes. <laughs> what about her ass? Uh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I, that is well. You really think the smell was coming from her vagina? Yes. Because no. I, when I walked in, it wasn't too oh, bad. There was like a general stink, and then she took the blanket off and was sitting with oh, one leg perched up. When she was talking when was the last time you you washed your stuff, Lady Di? Just wafted out her vagina? That's She's not showered right. recently. We wouldn't hear from Di again for another four months. And during this hiatus, she appeared to suffer a serious cognitive decline. At some point in September, Opie apparently suggested the idea of giving Lady Di her own show as a bit. But fans took the concept a little too far on Twitter and convinced Di that she would be taking over Sam Roberts' time slot on the Opie Radio channel. This led to two phone calls, one being to the Jim Norton Advice Show, where Di asked if there was any truth to the rumors. Hello, Lady Di in New Jersey. <coughs> Hey, hi, how you doing? Good, how are you? Okay, listen, um, I wanted to find out something. Maybe you would know about this. Um, is there any truth uh, to me taking over Sam's old shift? You know, the, the 12 to 2. Um, hmm. Do you, know, how, do, you know anything, do you know anything about that? Because it's how, all over Twitter and stuff. How did you hear about that? Well, I have Twitter on my phone. Oh, I got to be honest, you never cease to amaze me. The more disturbing of the two phone calls came two weeks later. Apparently in the period between the calls, Di had shown up to the studio uninvited and was informed that she did not in fact have her own radio show. More worryingly, when she called in on September 30th to ask about the show again, she seemed to not remember many of the details of the past year, like the GoFundMe that Adrian and Dr. Steve had set up for her. It's kind of sad, Lady Di, and we've tried to help you. So many people have reached out to you. Yeah. And and you just don't want you don't want to, you know, try to make yourself better. Dr. Steve uh organized a whole thing for you and then you had some weird reason why you weren't going to go. What did he organize for me? Huh? What did he so, organize for me? Oh my gosh, we get Dr. Steve on the phone. He was trying to get you in rehab and and try to get you, he, you know, evaluated that? and all that stuff. Yeah, what was this? I don't know why. Oh, stop see it. this just to see. Stop with this. That's why I didn't take her call. Oh, it's nonsense. Well, it's a I waste wanted, of time. I did want to. During this conversation, it seemed clear to everybody that the bit was over, and even their last attempt to get through to die proved fruitless. I, I, I will say this. I, I absolutely apologize to you because I think we've gone too far with you. I, I was I was going with the whole old lady die burying thing, having a little fun, and then I realized, man, this is just it's just it's just wrong now. It just feels wrong. After this phone call, Lady Di all but disappeared. She posted one tweet on October 24th, but other than that, she wouldn't be heard from again until December 2nd. When we finally heard from her again, it was a moment that those who witnessed it would not soon forget. 1980. Oh. I, I, where are you, Lady Di? We haven't seen that, you in that, so long. That, 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 that record came out in 1980. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. You nailed it. That record did. You guys owe me five bucks each. Lady Di. Bet. More importantly, where are you? A lot of people are very concerned about you. Uh, me and Jimmy kind of know I what's going on, on. I am on a ship right now, waiting for my duties right now. Oh. Holy. You're on a ship? Yes, I am. Which, which ship is it? Oh. Does it rhyme with my manic? It's a ship that's on the ocean. What ship? It's a, it's a Navy ship. It's a Navy ship. You're on a Navy ship right now? Yeah. Well, what, what ship did you think I was on? Oh, we didn't know. No one told us. Yeah, we heard rumors that, you know, you were away or something, and now we're finding out that you're on a Navy well, ship. Well, technically, I am away. I, I'm away from my apartment. Where are you? I, I'm on a ship. But you, where is, you that. Where's the ship, though? Hold on a second. Where 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 we docked at? Where we docked at? Where? All right. Well, you know, we're docked somewhere, but we're still in the United States. I listened to this phone call when it happened, and it was disturbing then. Even after listening to it many more times over the last four and a half years, it has never become any less disturbing. Anybody who was familiar with Di expected something like this would happen eventually. But that moment when you can feel the reality of the situation dawning on everyone in the room is still a deeply haunting experience. Served. Um, when are you coming back, you know? Yeah. Um, I have no idea. At this point, I really, really don't know. I mean, this, you know, this whole thing was my choice, my decision, you know? 
And, you know, uh, Anheuser-Busch knows about it. Oh, you still... They, 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 know, they, they, they technically know that I'm back in the service again. Wait, oh, so okay. I thought you left that job years ago. No, no, I never left the job. Oh. I never left that job. Oh, okay. Wow. What do you they, do? They, what? They, they, they let me go as a punishment. You're listening to someone whose mind has completely gone, who doesn't have a grasp on reality, who doesn't even know where she is and is trying to cobble together scraps of memories into a coherent story. Every time I listen to this audio, I notice something new that makes the experience even more eerie in retrospect. We know that Di was never on a ship when she was in the Navy, so there is something really sad about the fact that when she lost her mind, she believed herself to be on a ship. Like maybe it was some coping mechanism, retreating into the fantasy life she had hoped for in her 20s. I don't know. What has always struck me about this phone call from the first time I heard it was that the typical Lady Di tropes and mannerisms aren't there. She doesn't answer a question with a question. She doesn't say no, 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 or hold on. She doesn't answer a sarcastic question literally. It's almost like listening to a different person. I could speculate as to why, but I think I'll let you draw your own conclusions. As they ask Lady Di more questions, it only became more and more obvious that something was truly wrong with her. I, you're probably right. What, uh, what year is it, Lady Di? Oh, God, what year is it? Oh, man. Oh, boy. 2014. I'm, now I'm guessing 2014, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You got it. Who's president? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, who's the president right now? Ronald Reagan. Okay. Do you like him? Uh, and he, uh, yeah, I think he's kind of cute. Yeah. Yeah, he's all right. For an older guy, you know. Who do you think? I'm, that I'm not, uh, believe me, I am not up to date on anything right now because I just woke up a little while ago, so... Who's right. gonna Who's gonna be in the next Who's gonna be in the next president? Because we all know Reagan's time is just about done. Diana, Diana, me. I'm gonna be the next president. I'd vote for you. We all would vote for Lady Di. Yeah, or at least oh, as the first you lady. So much. <laughs> I vote for you guys too. This was the last time we would ever hear from Diana or Benny, and in the wake of this phone call, the Opie and Anthony fans understandably had a lot of questions. Thankfully, a few days after the incident, Dr. Steve was able to speak with Lady Di's son, Peter, who gave an update on her condition. So uh, there's been uh, there have been a lot of rumors and, you know, just speculation and all kinds of things about your mom's condition. And uh, she called into Opie and Jimmy recently and seemed a little disoriented. And I know, uh, look, a lot of people are concerned about your mom. A lot of people gave her a hard time when she was drinking, but she is no longer drinking and uh, she's in a bad position so uh, you know the the time for giving her a hard time is over we're just concerned how is she doing what's going on what can you tell us about her condition well to start i don't think she's doing that well she's really getting that much better anyway for the most part she's pretty much pretty much the same way that she went into the hospital with she's she's losing her mind she she thinks she's 20 years into the past she's still she still thinks that she's married to um, to her ex her ex husband Freddie, and uh, sometimes when I call her, sometimes she thinks I'm her brother Bobby. So right, right now, it's, and uh, her doctor also mentioned to me before that that her brain is actually physically shrinking. Yes. Okay, she's losing all her healthy tissue, and it's just not good, not healthy. Yeah, there. Are since this conversation in 2015, information about Lady Di's situation has been fairly limited. The last major update came in September of 2019 when her son Peter started to go fund me to buy her some comfort essentials. During the making of this video, I had the opportunity to speak to Peter, and he provided an update on his mother's current condition. I think a fairly natural place to start would be, you told me on Twitter uh, about this already, but for people who don't know, uh, what is the current condition with your mother? How is she doing at the moment? Well, the current condition is that she's in the nursing home. Mm -hmm. um, she's she's lost a portion of her brain. That's, that's how she's got her uh, dementia. I mean, of course, it came about through drinking and not really eating a lot of food. 
And this all really happened after her supposed boyfriend or roommate or whatever you want to call her died. Mm -hmm. Or call him, rather. Yeah, Bill, I think. Yeah, yeah, Bill, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it all happened after Bill died. Um, yeah, so it was just all downhill from there. Uh, kind of along the same lines. There are a lot of things that we don't really know, like as just the fans mm -hmm. of the show. Um, right. And one of those things was the fact that she kind of talked to Opie and Jim a few times before, you know, the kind of final events where she called in and she was clearly not in her right mind. Right. And there was just a period of time where she just didn't really have any contact or talk to anyone. Yeah. And that was always something that I've wondered is what, uh, what exactly led to you guys finding out that she was in this state what was um like the catalyst or was it a sudden thing you know was it gradual did somebody find her that kind of thing it was kind of sudden um mm -hmm. so basically i was at work right and what happened was i received a text message saying something like if you need help you can always contact the landlord downstairs as and then out of nowhere it would be like she was living on Grant Street in Elizabeth okay. at the apartment complex there where, where basically when we were living there, I was like four years old yep. at the time. So she, and then she would go to that and then it, she would just be kind of all over the place. So that's what, what happened was that day I, I kind of let it go. Like it's probably, she probably mm -hmm. is hallucinating or yeah. drunk or something like that. But then it was like <laughs> two days later that, she got stuck on the toilet. Yeah. She couldn't move. I, I, I went to I just went to check on her one day after work. Well actually no, what happened was that I um I went home. I came home because I to uh change mm -hmm. or whatnot. And then I went there because I was a little bit concerned as to what was going on. She wasn't picking up her phone as I remember. So I go there, mm -hmm. I knock on the door and she's yelling in a minute, in a minute. She's not She's not coming at all. So about 10 minutes later, I call 911 to to get in there to try to get her out. Um, she cops asked me some questions, and uh, they eventually got her out. We moved her to the hospital. I stayed with I stayed with her overnight okay. until she got a room at a Trinitas Hospital. And then about a week later, she's moved into a nursing home into East Orange. And um, it, it took it took forever to get her out of there. Then, of course, in uh, March of 2019, I was able to get her into the current place that she's at, and she's much better off where she is now. Okay. So, yeah, so yeah. She... What makes the story of Lady Di so compelling, in my opinion at least, is how little we truly know about her. Di was like some strange being from another dimension that we mortals were never meant to comprehend. She was the kind of person who would babble about absolutely nothing for 45 minutes and then casually drop the story about how her boyfriend fucked her in the ass every weekend for the entire 80s. There was always a sense that we were on the cusp of finding one of those golden nuggets that completely changed your perspective on her, or that maybe we would get an answer to the questions that would have explained so much of her life. Di was the only one who could give those answers, and now it's unlikely even she knows anymore. I've tried to condense her story down into something relatively easy to understand, but there are hundreds of videos of Lady Di appearances on the Opie and Anthony show, and we may never know how many more we can no longer find. Even for a show as well archived as Opie and Anthony, there are still huge chunks missing, and I think that is part of what is so compelling about the story. It's entirely possible that somewhere out there is a phone call that explains a huge portion of her bizarre existence and it was just never recorded or archived. We know just enough about Lady Di to form a dim sketch of her life, and from that sketch everyone paints their own picture of who she really was. I've seen the full spectrum of opinions in the comments section of my videos. Some people see her as a mentally ill woman who is being berated by a couple of cruel shock jocks. Some ask what the point of this documentary is, why dredge up all this information and spend so much time on someone so irrelevant who was already abused enough. Some people will see Di's story as a tragic tale of a woman who 
just gave up somewhere along the way, someone who fell through the cracks of society. Others will look at her behavior with disgust and wonder how a person could willingly live the way she did. How could she abandon her son so easily and never make an attempt to get him back? Then there are people for whom the story resonates on a more personal level, children of deadbeat parents or family members of drunks and drug addicts. Many people, including myself, had somebody like Lady Di in their life, and for them the story hits close to home. We can all listen to the same clips and come away with vastly different opinions of who this woman was. And maybe they're all true to some degree. She was a liar, and a drunk. She was a remorseless delinquent mother who would rather blow hobos than get a job and reunite with her son. She could also be incredibly hilarious at times, usually because of her total lack of self-awareness. But there is a reason why events like the Lady Die internship are still cherished by Opie and Anthony fans half a decade later. I haven't come across many stories that run the emotional gamut the way Lady Di does. You can be furious and disgusted with her one moment, and then literally seconds later you'll be completely caught off guard by some absurd non sequitur. Then you're laughing your ass off, and moments later you're back to hating her guts. That's why I keep coming back to Lady Di years later. Because every time I do I notice something new. I find a new layer or connection. I come away with different questions. That's what makes the story worth telling to me. Lady Di was a fucking enigma. As always, I want to thank you for watching the video, as well as liking, commenting, and subscribing. This video, it was a bit of a struggle, to say the least. I knew this part of the Lady Di saga would not be a fun experience to cover, but at a certain point, watching so many of these clips just wore me down mentally. I think that's part of why it took so long to make. It's not easy to focus so much of your attention on somebody slowly losing their mind. All I can say is that I hope it was at least interesting for you guys to watch, and maybe her story will serve as a cautionary tale for others going down that same road. I'd also like to thank my supporters on Patreon who helped make these videos possible. Thank you, Erica Hughes, Tex Punchum, Bart Wackenar, Josh G. Grows Mids, Dan Thomas, Mike Robals, Bone CK, James Taylor, CP, Jake Tracy, Tambi Helmick, The Son of Man, Neem, Origami Fleshlight, Kevin Howard, Medication Doesn't Work, and Jackie.